What's up? Welcome to Karen plus Deanna. My name is Cameron. We're having a chat stream today, and that is because the Wilds of Eldraine have just dropped in at Magic the Gathering. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to go and take a look, kind of chat through the latest cards coming to Magic. Um, we're going to talk through mechanics, things like that, and then we are going to um, get into what kind of, what of the cards I am looking to add to the decks that I have. Um, as always, when we do these reviews, um, I'm not a pro player. I like to have fun. Uh, we're going to kind of just chat about how some of the cards are going to work, but we're not going to necessarily get too caught up. There probably will be rules, mistakes, that kind of stuff. Um, so before we get into it, first off, we have the cards that are going to be in the base set. Um, they're going to have this icon. We're going to also have um the enchanted tales these are not new cards uh, they're reprints some of them are really cool we're going to take a look at those mostly for the art um, and then finally we're going to chat about the um, eldraine commander decks we're getting two decks one focused on fairies one focused on auras um, we're going to take a look through those cards to see if there's any of those that specifically stand out we're going to not focus on hitting every single card uh, but we're gonna kind of just like chat through the ones that are there see what kind of sparks joy and then um as i said as we go when we did this i want to say with lord of the rings as well maybe it was march of the machine um i have this spreadsheet that i use uh, this is all 13 um right yeah all 13 of my commander decks and this tracks all the cards that I am interested in adding to those decks. Uh, the idea, of course, is not that they will all be added, um, but these are ones that I find are interesting. And then basically what I do is I go and um, whenever I'm in like the mood to order cards, I go through and just kind of look for some of the stuff on here, pick a couple decks that I'm interested in upgrading, um, and then get the cards for those. Um, and so here we have like the commander, um, what their theme is. Then I also went through since the last time and added the little photo of all of the commanders. So that way they're a little bit more visually um, there versus just looking at a spreadsheet. So uh, we'll be flop flopping, um, swapping through um, these sheets as we go and as we chat through stuff. Um, if you're watching uh, on YouTube, would love it if you'd like, comment, subscribe. That would really help us as we grow the channel. Uh, and then I also, um, as whether you're here live on twitch.tv slash Karen plus Deanna or on YouTube, let me know what cards you're excited about. Um, are you planning to play a lot of this? Um, the Enchanted Tales definitely make it so there's some really cool hits. Uh, I'm very excited for how this is going to, to land for Commander. Um, but yeah, let's um, go ahead and take a look. Again, feel free to hop in if you're watching. Let me know if you've played Magic. Let me know some of your favorite cards. If you've literally never played Magic before and you just think a card has cool art, let me know that as well. Uh, I'm excited to hear what people are interested in. Uh, and so, yeah, so let's get started. We're going to... Um, we're going to start with the main set because um, it's probably going to be the bulk of this. Oh, and I should say at the end, we're going to also go and play some arena and just kind of jam some games. And so, um, yeah, so this uh, is Wilds of Eldraine. Um, this is our return to the plane of Eldraine. The, the, uh, uh, the world of Eldraine is a mix of knights as well as a mix of fairy tales. And so our first set there, Throne of Eldraine, really focused on the knight side of it. Um, and so this one is very focusing on the fairy tale side of it to the point that every, every two color pair has a theme that's like based on one of the fairy tales. And so we're going to go and kind of chat through that as we go. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of the vibe that we're looking at here. We have a very obvious like evil queen with the special apple and stuff like that. So as we go, we'll get to see some of those things brought in as well. Um, I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and get going. Um, so starting off, we have Archon of the Wild Rose, which is a very sick name. Four mana, four, four flyer. Um, other creatures you control that are enchanted by auras have base power and toughness four, four and flying. Um, one of my friends uh, has a crazy cool um, green, white enchantress deck that is, he's gonna be getting a ton of pickups from this set. I love this card. I think this card is sick. 
Um, I don't have a place for it. I don't really play an Aura's deck at the moment. Um, I this is the type of card that I hope is a big deal, like in standard. I would love to this to be a finisher just because like the art is so beautiful, but um, not really anything specific that I have. We have Archon's Glory. Um, I like this theme of like Archons with like these their riders having this really cool spear. Is it a rider? Um, it might just be the person living their best life. Um, sorry, I just got a notification that we went live again. Hopefully the stream did not crash. Um, okay, so this introduces us to our mechanic, uh, or one of our first mechanics is just bargain, which is um, basically when you cast the spell, you can sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or a token as you cast it, and then you get basically a pumped up version of the effect. So for this one, we get a, uh, it's always a plus two plus two boost. And then if the spell is bargained, that creature also gains flying and life link. This is gonna be a, a house and limited, I think. Like the ability to block flyers with it, it's only one white mana. Um, yeah, this seems like it's gonna be super cool. Bargain is gonna be very easy. Uh, we didn't talk about it yet. There is um, a theme of auras, um, kind of tying in with Archon of the White Rose, so. Seems good. I think this is going to see a lot of play in Limited, but I don't know if we'll see anything past that. Um, Armory Mouse, um, Celebration. Um, celebration is any time um, two or more non-land permanents have happened, some have entered the battlefield, something happens. So Armory Mouse gets plus O plus two, as long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control. So it becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Seems fine. Um, let's see. Besotted Knight. Um, create a royal roll token attached to target creature. The enchanted creature gets plus plus one and has ward one uh, and then becomes a three three. So we get to see two of our mechanics here. First, we have the return of adventure, um, which is super powerful. Um, it basically gives your creature like something else that they can do typically for less ma mana. And then if you cast the adventure, you can later cast the um, creature side of or the permanent side of it, I guess, because um, they're not all creatures anymore. So this seems like it's going to be a house, again, in limited. Um, rolls um, are an aura token, and then a creature can only have one roll per player enchanted it. So if you would put a second roll on it, you put a, put two on instead. Uh, or you would get rid of one instead. There we go. Um, seems fine in limited. Let's see. Destroy time with permanent controlled. Um, permanent control or a token was destroyed this way. Um draw a card interesting not really sure what we're gonna be doing with that let's see another royal roll um let's see i think you could just post one plus one until end of turn it can't be blocked that's a cool pump um so you kind of make it so you their big stuff can't block it so they have to chump seems fine you get to squeak by i uh, see what they did there because it's a mouse um, cooped up, um, our pacifism variant for this enchanted creature can't attack or block, and then you can pay three mana to exile, exile it. Seems like it's be fine and limited. Um, curse courtier, um, when it enters the battlefield, um, create a cursed roll token attached to it. So it's in normally a three, three with lifelink. Um, but if it, um, has a cursed roll on it, it's a one, one because it gets turned into a frog. Um, I like this a lot. It seems like if you can like play this on three, you have your cursed roll that you can then bargain to get rid of. Like that seems pretty good. Um, beginning of your upkeep comes more lands than you create a treasure token. That's fine. Um, choose they gain control of target control. You draw a card. Seems cool. Um, worth noting that you can't sacrifice the treasure in response to the ability. It would fizzle it since it's the only target. Let's see. Sacrifice two enchantments. Return it from the graveyard to your hand. I like that it's like protecting the guard, this dutiful griffin. Let's see. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control um, this turn by creatures. Um, anticipate that having some serious blowouts just in the, in the realm of... Um, combat tricks, you get this ability to blank your, or blank their damage to you after blocks. Um, that seems very nice. 
Uh, expel the interlopers. I love this spell. Uh, like This looks super cool. Uh, choose a number between 0 and 10. Destroy all creatures with power greater than or equal to the chosen number. Um, don't necessarily have a deck for this. Uh, I think this is going to see some decent play in Commander. Because if you're... I have a bunch of like one or two CMs or two, one or two power creatures. It's very easy to destroy everything else. So if you're one, run, one in, running like a white weenies style deck, you can um, expel everything bigger than them and then get in a big attack. Um, tap target creature. It gets um, double strike. It has so it basically upgrades from first strike to double strike. Seems good. Um, class caskets getting reprinted. Hopeful Vigil, when it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 white knight with Vigilance. When it's put in the graveyard from the battlefield, scry 2. Seems fine. It's a 2-2 with Vigilance for 2, then upside later. Um, whether or not you sacrifice it itself or you bargain it. Like, that seems like it's going to, like, would see play. Killian Lightblades. We'll talk more about Killian later on. He's one of our new major characters to the story. Um... He has, this is Bargain. It deals three damage to target attacking a blocking creature. The spell was Bargain to destroy that creature instead. So you don't necessarily have to Bargain this because you can just potentially just destroy it with three damage. But it's cool that this is an out to uh, like an upgrade. So, yeah. Um, when enchantment is put in the graveyard from a battlefield, create a 1 1 bird. So that's cool. So you have your Bargain synergies. Uh, it seems like it'll be a cool like role player and limited. Probably too slow for constructed. Let's see, moment of valor. Uh, untapped target creature gets plus one plus O oh, and indestructible. Cool. So it's a little expensive for a combat trick, or you can just destroy a creature. Um, Moon Shaker oh. Calvary. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain flying and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. So this is supposed to be the white crater hoof behemoth. Um, and so the vibe is that instead of giving trample, you give flying. Um, I don't necessarily know if we have a great place for Moonshaker Calvary, um, which seems crazy. Um, a lot of our decks that would be wanting it are green. Um, we're going to put it over here with Brenna. Add that as our first. Did I just completely misspell Calvary? I did. Oh, click and all. Uh, I just completely butchered that like three times. Wow. Spelling is hard, especially when people, um, like when you're doing it in front of people. Okay. So there we go. Um, super good card. I, I think of like with their intention of creating a white crater hoof behemoth, I think it's not going to be surprising how much impact this is going to have um, any white deck that does not have green for crater hoof now has this crazy version um, and i think there's going to be a lot that's going to happen i could definitely see this especially foils of it becoming very expensive if it is not quickly reprinted um, and it's not in like a commander product in the next year or so Okay, plunge into water, tap up to one target creature, scry one, then draw a card. So there is a blue-white theme is based on snow white, um, and it's all about tapping your opponent's creatures. So this seems good in that deck. You get to draw a card, you get to scry, you get some tempo. Um, the princess takes flight, three mana, um, saga, exile to one target creature. Target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains flying, and then return the exiled card from the battlefield under to the battlefield that Insano's control. Uh, we were talking about this in the Infinity Bros Discord. Um, if they hit your their hit your commander with this, and then and you don't put it in the command zone, and then they destroy this enchantment, you don't get your commander back. Uh, I anticipate there being some pretty crazy blowouts on that, especially like in um, Historic Brawl. Um, so just be aware. Um, there's also some fun shenanigans with like um, removing this first counter in various ways, and that sets it back, and then you can um, basically continually exile things, and they just don't come back because this never this never hits um, the third step. So I think this is cool, um, if, especially if you have that synergy, like Tom Bombadil decks that you have a synergy around removing the lore counters. Uh, when this dies, create a young hero role. 
attached to one creature you can creature you control so it's plus one plus well, no, sorry. when it attacks if its toughness is three or less put a plus one plus one counter on it so it seems like it'd be really cool if there's like a four one or something like that in the set you can make it a young hit hero and then get a good amount of pumps uh, you could also do some like weird shenanigans with a young hero where you like lower your own creature's toughness somehow so that you get more counters that's probably just like shenanigans but like technically possible regal bunny corn adorable a two mana star star bunny or bunny <laughs> rabbit unicorn uh, its power and toughness are equal to the number of non-land permanents you control um i don't know i feel like this is just a big creature magic has gotten pretty well past the era of just a vanilla creature being powerful uh, like there was a card in Strixhaven that created a I think it created an XX where X is the number of cards in your library. So the idea being that like when you cast it, you could create like a 40-40. Um, and that wasn't really good enough to see play. Um, so without some way of like giving this evasion or something, I don't necessarily see this being good enough, which seems crazy to say. Uh, return target creature card, man of value three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield, such as your Regal Bunny Corn, and then attach a young hero role to it. Seems fine. Um, a little bit of Sun Titan. Um, let's see. Rhyme for Reindeer. Cool. It, when an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls again. Ties in with that blue-white theme. Um, could see play in limited. Don't necessarily see it going anywhere else. Um, Vigilance. When an enchantment is in control from... From the graveyard, from the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter. That's cool. So again, tie in, it ties in with bargain. We had something up here. Uh, yeah, the Knight of Dove, Doves. Doves. <laughs> That's what I definitely how I read it. Uh, so you can get a 1-1. One, one. You can pump this up. Seems good. Let's see. When an enchantment enters the battlefield, you control scry one. And then we get plus one, plus one until end of turn for each enchantment you control. So again, uh, this one even costs mana, but like, Basically, the ability to just make it big. Don't know if that's going to be good enough. When it enters the battlefield, top, tap, top. Man, it's a day. Tap target creature and opponent controls, and I put a stun counter on it so it won't untap. It would remove the stun counter instead. Uh, when it's, you tap an untapped creature and opponent controls, plus, plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. Really good in that limited deck. Um, if that happens to see any play, um, that would be cool, but I doubt it. Um, let's see vigilance beginning of combat on your turn you can pay one if you do create a sorcerer roll token attached to target your creature gets plus 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 one and then whenever you attack scry one um, and the part of me that just like loves playing cards is like what if we went and combined this with the blue white or blue green elves from lord of the rings so now you have like all this extra scry synergy that's probably not good but, like, that's kind of where my brain goes. Uh, this definitely does not seem worth it. Um, but I think if you're playing this, it's because of the, the ability to constantly churn out rolls that triggers all of your enchantment enters the battlefield or go to the graveyard type stuff. Seems fine. Uh, and return tar another target permanent you control to its owner's hand. If you do, scry two. Cool. Um, stroke of Midnight. Um, so... Um, red, white, the idea is Cinderella. You're going to the ball. And so that's the, what you have here. Destroy target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a 1-1 one, one white human um, creature token. So this is probably one of the best pieces of removal for commander. Um, and again, probably goes and literally like or has a place in like literally any white deck. Um, we're not necessarily, we're going to kind of just like put it here as we do like a pass through. There's a, a card that called Generous Gift that gives your opponent a 3-3 when you destroy their stuff, but it can hit lands. Like this is probably a strict upgrade to that. Um, and super cool art. Um, Okay, let's go here. Tail for the Ages. Enchanted creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Seems awesome. Um, again, if the rolls deck has a chance in standard, this could see like a two of or three of play. Um, 
but the rolls deck has to see play, and then this does not actually help you with your rolls, so I just kind of depend on what they do. Three blind mice, create a mouse, copy a token, um, and then do it again, and then creature control plus one plus one in vigilance, so I, <laughs> you could make three mice, then the mice get stronger. Um, seems okay. Um, obviously, they destroy your mouse. You're in a lot of trouble, but uh, ideally, you're playing this with some other token synergy. Let's see. Um, let's see. Play two. Create a sorcerer roll. Okay, so we have this cycle of the virtue cards. Uh, there, there's one for each color, and so they all have an adventure ability, and then they are an enchantment. So. Um, so for two, you can create a knight token with vigilance. At the beginning of your instep, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Untap those creatures. So the idea being that they, um, that you can pump your team. And then give them kind of like pseudo vigilance. Um, like you get to untap them. And so as with every... Uh, card that just says plus one plus one counter it gets added into the Hamza list which is like this mess <laughs> that's why Hamza is so much longer than everybody else um, and so it seems really good pump your whole team it, the, these are I think going to be very strong because even though they're expensive enchantments they give you something that you can do early um, wear a fox bodyguard super cool art um over on City on a Hill, um, which is a tabletop RPG podcast, I'm playing a Null Magus. Um, and so kind of through that, I've been very much getting into the like bipedal um, animal, like warrior type stuff. And so like uh, my character's name is Ezek. He's kind of like a Viking is like the theme I'm going for. And if something were to ever happen to him, I'd be very upset. But fox bodyguard thing like let's go somehow this is an elf as well as well so like here we go and just battlefield exile to one target non-fox until this leaves the battlefield then you can sacrifice it um to gain two life so you could like sacrifice a, or exile a token um and then they would not be able to get it back it has flash so like you can play this in response to a board wipe to save something um, that's kind of some of the vibe that we do in Chulane as well as over in Hamza. Uh, the idea of like s sacrificing one creature to save others. Uh, don't necessarily have a spot for it, but I could see that being something that we open and then, hey, we'll put in a deck because we have one. Um, Aquatic Alchemist. Um, I love the art for this. It's so silly and I'm a huge fan. Um, so for three, you can put an instant or sorcery on, from your graveyard on top of your library. And then when you cast your first instant sorcery spell, it gets plus two plus O. Oh. I don't think there's a chance that we would play this in Veyron. Like, but I think there's a very strong argument to considering any card that is blue, red, and is an adventure because it gives you your... Um, your trigger for casting instant sorcery and then you still get a body out of it so like i don't know i could see this being something that we consider there let's see six mana dragon wizard again super cool art i love that it's um i love that it's like a dragon whose horde is books instead of gold um that feels very strixhaven um but like i love that so much so flying, four, six, ward two, and then when it enters the battlefield, scry two. Not the best card, uh, um, but I fully anticipate getting destroyed by it and limited. Um, Asinine Antics, you can cast it as though it had flash if you pay two more. And then for each creature an opponent controls, create a cursed roll token attached to that creature. If you can control, um, yeah, and so then enchanted creature is a one one so there's some really cool like blowout potential here um because you can um your opponents attack each other in commander then you just turn all of their creatures into one ones and then essentially wipe the board so like that's something um i don't know if there's a place that we would want this 
Um, I could see... Yeah. I don't know. Like, this is a super fun card, and I like this a lot. We're going to drop it over here in Rashmi and Ragavan for now. Um, the problem with it is it's not a board wipe. And basically, the tempo play, which is kind of like Rashmi and Ragavan's MO, is everything's a tempo play. Um, and so we'll see. Turn target you don't control the man of Athery less to its owner's hand, and then it's a 6 5. Seems fine. Again, I think this is kind of like the power of adventure. Um, you get something that you can do early. You have a late game threat. Um, seems good. Let's see. When it enters the battlefield, tap a creature. It doesn't untap. So this is your claustrophobia for the set. Uh, when it's put in the graveyard from the battlefield, you pay one. If you do scry one and draw a card, seems fine. Uh, like it'll be good and limited because it's a good piece of removal. Chancellor of Tales. Super cool art. Love this sword. Uh, when you cast an adventure spell, you may copy it and choose new copies. Uh, Lucky Clover at home. Um, what is this? Diminisher Witch uh, has bargained. When it's about to create a cursed roll token attached to a creature an opponent controls. That seems good. Like, it's cool disdainful art. Uh, disdainful stroke art. Uh, extraordinary journey. Um the end of the story, Killian goes through an omen path, which is what's depicted here. Enters a battlefield, exile the top X, or exile up to X target creatures for as long as those cards, uh, for each of those cards, its owner may play uh, play it as long as it remains exiled. It's a mediocre piece of removal, but whenever one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield, if one or more of them entered from exile and it was, um, or it was cast from exile, uh, you draw a card. It triggers only once each turn. So, like, this can just be, like, a two-mana enchantment that you get a benefit from if things enter from exile. Um, this is right up Rashmi and Ragavan's alley, since you're ca exiling the top card of your opponent's decks, and then they are entering from exile. And so, seems good. There's a lot of just stuff entering from exile as well, so, like, seems great there. Um, Farsight Ritual, Sacrifice in, or has Bargain. Look at the top four cards of your library. If it was Bargain, look at the top eight instead. Put two in your hand and the rest at the bottom. I love me a four mana draw cards. Um, four mana draw two at instant speed. Yes, um, whatever the variant is. Um, probably not going to see play in any of our commander decks, but uh, like theoretically, we could see something like this go in Rashmi and Ragavan because that's the one that has the ability most easily to take advantage of bargain. But as of right now, I don't know if that deck really wants a card like this. We'll put it on there just in case. I talked myself into it. So let's put that here. Um, I hope this card sees play in standard. Um, that's kind of my vibe for all of these. Um, Glimmer of Genius, um, Memory Deluge, like there's so many cool four mana um, get cards. Don't necessarily think this is going to re replace Memory Deluge, unfortunately, but here we are. Uh, freeze stuff, Gadrick's First Duel, um, create a cursed roll, um, attached to up to one target creature, Scry. Um, when you cast your next instant source, what better figure or less, um, copy it. That's ah, fine. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, draw four cards, then discard two cards. Um, whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, tap target creature and opponent control. So here we have kind of a swap. Like the the adventure side of this one is a lot cheaper. Um, and then the creature side is, or is a lot more expensive. The creature side is cheaper. Uh, this is really cool on the creature side. Cast this on four and then cast a five mana spell the next turn. Taps on your opponent controls, get in a good attack. Seems good. Um, horned Lock Whale. Um, sure, it's a whale. Uh, when the owner of target attacking creature you don't control puts it on top of bottom of their library, then has Flash Ward 2. Um, when it enters the battlefield tapped unless it's your turn. I could see this being a control finisher. Um, the Lagoon Breach is just like super solid. That like... You're basically denying your opponent their draw on their next turn if they want to keep their creature. Seems good. This entering tapped, though, 
if you cast it out. Like, it makes it so you can't use it as a surprise blocker. Like, I like it a lot, but um, who knows? Um, ice out, um, counter spell, uh, and then it's one less. It's our cancel variant. Um, cancel with whatever the set mechanic is. I swap century. Uh, when attacked, you can play, then you pay two, then you tap something. So again, seems like it'll be really good and limited. Um, Ingenious Prodigy has Skulk. Shout out to Skulk being back. Um, it's going to enter the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, if it has one or more counters, you can remove one to draw a card. Seems fun. Um, basically, you're like banking your mana to eventually become cards, and then you're going to hope this doesn't get destroyed. Um, seems fun. Okay, uh, I'm not overly excited by it. Um, into the Fake Court, draw three cards, create a fairy. Um, we can block only creatures with flying. Um, it's fine. Um, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, draw a card, and then it's cheaper if it's bargained. Um, I don't really think anything too special. Um, then you can sacrifice it to draw a card, and then create a sorcerer roll attached to another creature you control. Activate it only as sorcery. That seems cool. Um, it could be like a blocker in the short term and then use it to power out and replace itself and pump up a creature later on. Seems cool. Um, we got a merfolk, um, misleading moats. Tar the target creature's owner puts it on top or bottom of their library. So it's the, it's the, uh, can't, where, where's the whale? Oh, it's over here, <laughs> right, uh, or two above it. So it's this effect, um, but you can use it to save your own creatures in this case. Uh, we've got a fairy, a mocking sprite, and since sorceries cost one less, sure. Um, target creature gets minus four, minus O, oh, and then it's a three, four flyer, it's okay. Mills four cards, then put an instant or sorcery or fairy from among the milled cards into your hand, and then it's a one, three vigilant for two. Seems fine. Um, quick study, it's divination, uh, power crept up to an instant. So draw for three mana, draw two cards, but now you can do it at instant speed. Um, sleep cursed fairy. And so it's a one mana three, three with flying and ward, which just seems cool, except it enters with three stun counters and you can pay two to untap it. So this enters tapped on one. You go into your second turn, you remove one stun counter you could pay to remove a second one. And so then on turn three, you could it would, you'd remove the final stun counter and you could pay mana to untap it. Or it's untapped on turn four normally, right? So two, three, no, it's untapped on turn five normally if you don't pay. Ooh, that seems steep um, just to get a three, three. Um, but what would I know? Um, cool art, love that the goose knows that they're tricking them. Let's see, um, Snare Master Sprite, when it enters, pay two. Um, if you do tap a creature, put a stun counter, cool and limited. Counter target spell, unless it's control, it pays two, plus an additional one for each fairy you control. One of the commander decks is fairy, if it doesn't come with spell stutter. Um, also, you know, shout out to spell stutter sprite. Uh, but if it um, seems like it'd be really cool, really good and limited. Um, especially if you're getting a lot of fairies. Let's see. When you cast an instant, create a sorcerer roll attached up to one target creature. Um, seems okay. This is like kind of win more ish in our Veyron deck, where we can be like creating drakes with Tolerand and then putting sorcerer rolls on those drakes to pump them up. Probably not good enough, but seems fun. Then we have Storm Keld Prowler, um, right? That's what that is. And so this is, let's see. When you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, put plus two, put two plus one plus one counters on it. I love that we're getting this five or more in blue as a theme. Um, I like that. Um, card's fine. Like it's a two one for two that can eventually get bigger. Uh, succumb to the cold tap up to one tap one or two target creatures upon controls put stun counters on each of them it's going to be a good good tempo play and limited especially 
Um, you can basically like blank their turn and then get in some good attacks. Um, when you attack with one or more fairies, draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, put a plus one on counter on it. Um, three mana, one, three, like with flying just seems expensive. Um, I guess you can attack with this on four, turn four, and it becomes a two, four with flying. I don't know. Cool art. Love the sword. That's kind of been like the theme of a lot of this stuff, but, uh, Tenacious Tome Seeker. Now oh, enters the battlefield. If it was bargain, return an instant or a sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Eh. Uh, this is kind of like the card we talked about earlier that we weren't sure if it would have a spot in Varen. This is just it as a creature instead of as a as an adventure. Let's see. Tap target creature. Create a cursed roll attached to it. Like I like this card a lot. Uh, I wish it had a little bit more going for it on the creature side, but you know here we are. Virtue of Knowledge, our Panharmonicon, Doubling Season, Mom, um, which is Elspeth, uh, Mother of Machines, um, variant. And so two mana, copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You can choose new copies for it. And then if a permanent entering the battlefield under your control causes an ability of a, a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. Um, seems fun. Um, I wish that this worked, like if this was when you cast it, um, that would mean it would have a place in True Lane. The problem here is that the value for True Lane is on casting the creature, not on the creature entering the battlefield, though of course you play a lot of enter the battlefield creatures. Um, there's not really another place that we would want to do that. Um, so, eh. I like this card a lot. I think this is gonna be a card that a lot of people are gonna want to be playing but doesn't, isn't going to really have a home for us. And then we have our final mono blue card. Um, instant for two until end of turn. Target creature you control has base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. It gains flying and hexproof. Seems cool. Um, this is going to be a good reminder about like being weary of casting instants on your opponent's turn. Because you, you cast this, they then water wings, they then fizzle your spell because it now has hexproof and then now they have a bigger attacker um kind of like the infect deck in modern where you basically just never wanted to cast spells during your opponent's attack spe attack step in case they pumped up their creatures they would just pump it out of range um, and then that would kind of give them the go ahead to do a whole lot more um excited for this card i think it's going to be a ton of fun and limited um, don't necessarily know where it's going to go from there. Um, okay, so we've done white, we've done blue. We're going to take a moment. I'm going to get a drink of water. Because we got a reader coming up. And that is our first, um, or our only Planeswalker. Um, bigger lore that's going on um, at the end of March of the Machine. Um, there has been a change to the multiverse. A bunch of Planeswalkers lost their spark. And so there's a lot fewer in the multiverse now. Um, and then we also have found out that we're only going to be getting one Planeswalker per set going forward, as opposed to normally three to four. Um, so there is going to be a change there with a lot fewer per set. Um, and it seems like in general, more characters lost their spark than kept them. We'll, we'll see some legendary creatures that have lost their spark once we get to multicolor. Uh, but uh, yeah, so our one ma our one Planeswalker, five mana uh, for a five loyalty. If you would pay life while your library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of your library instead. Um, so if you would like crack a fetch land, instead of paying life, you exile the top card. Um, seems good. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Cause I, like a lot of the decks that want to be paying life, want to be, want to be paying life. Maybe that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, and so exile and cards from the top of top of your library might not actually be an upside. Um, and then you could also end up exiling the cards that you need, um, or something like that, since you have no control over what gets exiled. 
I don't know. I'm curious to see how this one will do. Then plus one, look at the top two cards of your library, exile one of them and put the other in your hand. Um, cool draw variant. Minus two, create two one one black nightmare tokens with at the beginning of combat on your turn. If a card was put into exile this turn, uh, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. So they get stronger if you plus one or stronger if you pay life for something. Seems okay. It's a good way to protect Ashiok as well, getting two blockers. And then minus seven, um, target player exiles the top X cards of their library, or X is the total mana value of cards you own in exile. So you could kind of like mill somebody out with this. Like if you have 20 mana worth of cards in your exile, like that seems like an option that you can do. I don't know how good that would be um, because that means a lot of your like high mana cards are gonna be in exile, but I don't know, here we are. I'm overall not impressed with Ashiok um, for this one. Um, I, I like the other ones more, but I don't know, we'll see. I hope that I'm just like way undervaluing the abilities, especially for five mana, but overall I'm not like super impressed. Uh, we also get Ashiok's Reaper. When an enchantment you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Seems cool. Again, roll tokens, bargain, lots of ways to put enchantments in the graveyard. Um, let's see. Speaking of bargain, back for seconds. Return up to two card creature cards from the graveyard to your hand. If it was bargained, put one of those cards with mana value four or less of the battlefield inst instead of putting it into your hand. Like, I don't know, you're getting one mana um, essentially free um, if you were to bargain this, getting to put a four mana creature into play for three mana, putting another card in your hand, but you're giving up an artifact enchantment or a token to do so. I don't know. Like if you have cursed tokens that you can get rid of, great. But otherwise I don't really see this being something to write home about. Um, Borrow Naughty, um, flying when it has lifelink as long as you control another fairy and then you can pay to pump it. It's okay. Um, cool art, but um, it is what it is. Beseech the Mirror, one, black, black, black. Um, bargain, search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. If the spell was bargained, you can cast it without paying us mana cost. If the spell's mana value is four or less, um, put that put the exiled card in your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So basically this is four mana bargain cast any spell that's four or less from your deck. Um, I do think that there is a chance this becomes like one of the most played cards um, long term from this set. Because um, four mana gets you Elish, oh not Elish Nord, that's not um, this gets you Shieldred there we go. I couldn't remember the Black Praetor. Um, this gets you Shieldred. This gets you um, Damnation. This gets you the One Ring. Um, there are like so many cards that this basically counts as your fifth, sixth, seventh copies of, um, as long as you have something that you can bargain. So like one of the play patterns here is like you have your One Ring. It has two to three burden counters on it already. You then activate it for to put like your fourth one on it, and then you draw cards, cast Beseech the Mirror, go get a new one ring, um, and then you basically reset it so you aren't taking damage, and you pr get protection from everything again. Like, seems really good. Um, Commander-wise, um, do we have a place for this? Um, probably will help. Um... Like that deck is all about making zombie tokens. And so that seems like the one that we are most likely to beseech the mirror in. I'm not really sure what we could be getting out of that. Um, like Will Held is not exactly like, like the way that I have it built is not necessarily like the most powerful commander. So it doesn't necessarily have a bunch of great four drops, but that is something that you can do. Um, if it wasn't one black, 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 I would consider it for Marchesa. Um, this is a way of tutoring up something like Erebos, um, some of your like um, Silver Bullet type cards. 
Kind of the same idea here with Atraxa as well. Uh, it'd be really it'd be a cool way of tutoring up your Planeswalkers if you uh, if it wasn't three black. We're gonna put one in Marine. Marine just a lot of times has infinite mana to begin with, um, and I think we might have a demonic tutor. Whatever. No, nope, not that one. That's the two mana one. Diabolic tutor. Whatever the four mana tutor is, we might actually just have in Marine, and so this is just an upgrade since the deck's not gonna have issues with um, with mana. Candy Grapple. Um, I see what they did there. Um, I've made my stance on puns well known, but this is adorable. Um, minus three, minus three, and then if it was Bargain, it's minus five, minus five instead. Um, don't you mean poisonous? There's no such thing as a venomous, and then it gets he gets bit. I like it. I like it. Um, Conceited Witch. Um, I love the mirror motifs that we're seeing throughout this. Obviously, very fairy tale. Um, create a wicked roll attached to target creature you control um, and then um, exile this okay yeah it's, it's interesting that this is telling you how adventure works not what the wicked roll is uh, and then you get a 2-3 from menace so like this is great for the bargain decks it's like turn 2 you can price a brute beauty onto something that you already have um, that seems good Dream spoilers. Shh, spoilers. Um, cast a spell during... When you cast a spell during your opponent's turn, up to one target creature they control gets minus one and minus one. It's cool. Um, this goes really well with one of the commanders uh, for the fairies deck, but... Um, yeah, not necessarily anything too crazy there. Ego Drain. It's your Thought Seize variant. Um, um, and then if... So basically... If you control a fairy, it's Thought Seize. If you don't control a fairy, you exile a card from your hand as well. So it's like a two for one, but in the bad way. Um, so only we'll see play with fairies. The end. Um, this glass shattering stuff is kind of crazy. Um, exile target creature or planeswalker. Um, search your its controller's library hand, or graveyard hand and library for any number of creatures of cards with the same name as the permanent and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled this way. This is fun. Um, if you're the one casting it, you get to get rid of their threat, and then you get to draw a bunch of cards or get rid of a bunch of their versions of that. It's cheaper if you're a low life, um, which is something as well, can help you stabilize. Um, I could see this scene play to hit Shieldred, uh, especially as an instant. They cast Shieldred, you the end it, and then you get all, rid of all of their copies. Seems good. Um, so here we get Aret Ariette's Whisper. Um, target opponent discards two cards, create a wicked roll. Attached up to one target creature you control. So the wicked roll is gets um, plus one plus one, and then when this aura is put in the graveyard, each opponent loses one life. So tying in up here with the witch. So seems good. Again, you bargain your roll, do some good stuff. Fairy dream thief. Um, when it enters the battlefield, surveil one. Fine. When it uh, exile it from your graveyard, draw a card and lose a life. Okay, I feel like this is the card I'm going to open way too many of in Limited, and I'm going to always take it, and then it's going to just always be mediocre. Um, fairy Fencing, X and a black. Target creature gets minus X, minus X. Then if you control a fairy, they get an additional minus three, minus three. Um, again, fantastic art. Um, I like the idea that in a fairy deck, this is one mana, give it minus three, minus three, and then it can grow. Like, it seems like that could be doing a lot of very cool stuff um, in limited, hopefully in standard. Um, hopefully fairies get a place, but we'll see. Um, feed the cauldron. Um, destroy target creature with mana value three or less until, if it's your turn, create a food token. So it's an instant that you kind of want to play as a sorcery. It's okay, you'll play it in limited. Um, the fell horseman. Uh, return target card creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and then when it dies, put it on the bottom of your library. Um, yeah, that's a card. Um, Gumdrop Poisoner, sure. Um, one mana, create a food token at instant speed. And then it has lifelink when it enters the battlefield up to one target creature. It gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. 
these work very well together um, if you have multiple of these. Um, obviously very good with lifelink in general, but um, let's see. High Fey Negotiator Bargain. When it enters the battlefield, if it's bargained, each opponent loses three life. You gain three life. Cool limited card. Um, enters the battlefield. Each opponent discards a card and loses two life. And then when it's put in the graveyard in the battlefield, scry two, you can sacrifice it. So we saw like the other color versions of this cycle. I like this a lot. Um, I like that these cards give you a benefit to bargain. Um, and like they have a way of being self-sustaining as well. Um, if you don't draw the cards that bargain them. I like it. The Lich Knight's Conquest. Sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is one that I need to go and actually like look at the actual makeup of my Marin deck um, and see if this is something that would be worth it there. I don't think it would be. I don't think I run enough tokens um, or enchantments or artifacts to actually make that worth it. Uh, this is definitely something, though, that we want for Will Helt, the same kind of the same reasons that we discussed earlier. Um, and then, let's see. Um, this also has a good place in Edgar Markov. Um, let's move Edgar down some. Since we're creating everyone's favorite vampire commander. Uh, since we're creating the one ones, we can bargain those to then get our other um, our other vampires back out of our graveyard. It seems good to me. Um, Lord Skitters, Sewer King, Legendary Rat. When it enters the battlefield, when, it, when another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. Beginning a combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature with, with this creature can't block. Um, so they're kind of doing a similar thing to what to Decay or with Mites, where you have these tokens that can't block, uh, very much intended for sacrifice fodder. Uh, this card seems really good with any of the other legendary rats leading your commander deck um, compared to this one. Um, this seems much better than 99, but I don't play rats. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's enchantment for Lord Skidder's Blessing. Um, when it enters the battlefield, create a wicked roll attached to target creature you control. And then at the beginning of your draw step, if you control an enchanted creature, lose one life and draw an additional card. That seems cool. It's kind of a Phyrexian Arena variant, but you have to have a enchanted creature, which this does give you. So like, so play a one mana creature, give it, or play Lord Skitter's Blessing on two. You now have your, your one mana creature pumped up, and then you have the enchanted creature. Again, I, I could see this seeing a lot of play um, if that curve is reasonably doable. Um, Lord Skitter's Butcher, sure. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a rat that can't block, sack another creature to then scry two and draw a card, or creatures you control gain menace. Um, seems good in a rat deck, giving all your rats menace. Um, most rat decks also have rat tokens, so this is plenty of fodder for that. Yeah. Uh, Mintstrosity, sure. We're, we're, we're doing an unset now. Um, when it dies, create a food token as a 1-3. It's okay. <laughs> Not dead after all. Um, this is our very, this is like a variant of a common type of card. Um, and so until end of turn, target creature you control gains when the creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control, then create a wicked roll token attached to it. This seems cool. Like they're going from being like a normal person to a wicked witch is kind of the idea. They're coming back as who they were really are because they weren't dead after all. Um, some people pointed out that there's a card from Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty. It's that's you were already dead. And so you could, you were already dead something and then they can do not dead after all. Um, you get some fun vibes. Um, Rankle's Prank um, as a throwback to our OG um, fairy nuisance. Uh, choose one or more. Each player discards two cards. Each player loses four life. Each player sacrifices two creatures. Um, seems cool. Um, if you can play this in a, in a deck where you're already going to have low cards in hand, um, you can make it so discarding two cards isn't really a downside. Um, 
but um, and then if you're playing this with rats you should have two creatures you can sacrifice yeah I can see it seen fringe sideboard play rat out um, I, I love that this is literally just someone throwing a rat like in the world of magic where like all of this crazy stuff going goes on sometimes you just are walking over a bridge and you need to throw a rat at someone like um hold this for me uh we'll talk about tatentons um later on once we get to multicolor. but i love that um after one cre target creature gets minus one minus one then you create a rat sure um uh, rowan's grim search love the art and kind of where Rowan went in this set. Um, bargain, if the spell is bargain, look at the top four cards of your library, then put up to two of them back on top of your library in any order, the rest into your graveyard, then you draw two cards and lose two life. Um, kind of like read the Bonesy, um, where you are, like that one you're scrying, then drawing, trying to, then drawing two and losing two. This lets you like look at more total cards. Um, you could also look at four cards, put zero of them on top. If you don't want any of them, put all four into your graveyard. Like that seems cool. Um, we don't necessarily have a place for this. Again, there's like a, a conversation that maybe this could go in a version of Marine, of Marin, um, but probably not. Stuffed pupper, deals combat damage, create a food token. Uh, this seems fun in the Sam and Frodo deck from Lord of the Rings. Just like suddenly you have the, the, or the, the scream puffer. I think I said stuffed. Uh, this seems like a cool way of just like constantly getting more food. Shatter the Oath. Sick art. Um, destroy target creature or enchantment. Create a wicked, wicked roll attached to up to one target creature you control. Five mana removal is not necessarily going anywhere, uh, but I feel like you probably would play this in limited. Um, Specter of Mortality. Um, when it enters the battlefield, exile that. Um, you may exile one or more cards from your creature cards from your graveyard. If you do, each other creature gets minus X minus X, where X is the number of cards you exiled. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about this versus Massacre Girl, because um, they kind of each fulfill a similar role. This one you need. Massacre Girl, you need a 1-1 one, one to start the chain of killing a bunch of stuff. This one, you just have to have creatures in your graveyard. Um, this also lets you save your stuff more easily. Um, Massacre Girl does typically snowball and just kill everything. So I could definitely see this having an advantage um, over that. Um, for us, I don't really know if there's some place that we have for this. Like, our one graveyard deck is Marin that we don't typically want to be, like, getting rid of our creatures for. Like, typically we want to, like, like, we want to actually keep our our creatures in our graveyard. Like, I, I could see a world, in a world, um, I could see a world where we want to... Um, like exile some of the stuff from our graveyard. Um, let's go to types. It's like we are running 39 creatures. Like we can definitely get into, in a world of pure imagination. <laughs> Ayo, my Shannon, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming first time. Appreciate the first time chat. Um, this is Cameron plus Deanna. My name is Cameron. We're chatting through the wilds of El Drain. Happy to have you. Um, what are you playing? What are you watching? What are you listening to? Um, and if you're a magic player, and that's kind of how you found this stream, um, what cards are you excited for for Wilds of El Drain? Um, we are almost done with black, I believe. Um, and so I'm kind of just chatting through the full set. Um, it's like there's cards in here that like we wouldn't be like opposed to exiling from our graveyard, but it's also like not necessarily where we want to be. I don't know. I feel like that's probably not, probably not where this would go, but I don't know. It feels like there should be some place that we could play it. 
Um, Slide of Hand for Pioneer. Ooh, and Hopeless Nightmare for Popper. Which one is Hopeless Nightmare? I don't remember if we've... I don't remember what... Oh, we did talk about this one. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Um, I just forgot. The <laughs> we literally just talked about it. Um, I'm really excited for Hopeless Nightmare. I think it's a super cool card. Um, I like this whole cycle of, like, have an effect, uh, but then scry two when it's put in the graveyard. Um, yeah, I think that that's super cool. Um, let's see, where are we at? Spiteful he Hex Mage, when it enters the battlefield, create a curse token attached to target creature you control, so that creature becomes a 1-1. One, one. Um, so if you play this on your first turn, it becomes a 1-1 one, one instead of a 3-2, and then you have to, like, bargain to get rid of it. Um, have not like specifically been paying attention to like the CMCs of the bargain cards, but like if there's like a good two mana bargain, um, uh, like that could be a really cool way of getting this out. Um, uh, like there's a three mana one, uh, that could be a really cool way of getting like a three, two for one mana. You gotta do some work though. I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Um, Stingblade Assassin. Um, Flash Flying, when it enters the battlefield, destroys target creature from controls that just dealt damage this turn. Eh. Um, target creature gets plus three plus slow. Draw a card. I love, again, this is like not an unset, but like this is in all the best ways a card that could have been in an unset. Um, I love the, the candy come to life motif that we've had. Um, this seems fine. Like, I mean, it's ideally your creature trade at least trades, and then this replaces itself. Seems good and limited. When this enters, create a food. Then you can sack a food to have target player lose life. Um, love that they're doing stuff like this with food tokens. Like, you're not just gaining life anymore. Um, you are, um, like, actually using food to end the game. I like that a lot. Um... Taken by Nightmares, four mana, instant, exile target creature. If you control an enchantment, scry two, great and limited. Um, seems like a really good first pick and draft. Um, just to get removal, like it get really good removal. Um, Tangled Colony, it's a rat, it can't block, it's a three, two for two. When it dies, create X rats, where X is the amount of damage dealt to it this turn. I think this card's really good. Um, like the idea that it's just like an aggressive attacker and then when it dies you get more rats that you can attack with like i don't know like that seems really cool is it good enough i don't know um this ideally turns into at least two rats uh, but i don't know if that's going to be good enough um Twisted Sewer Witch. When it enters, create a rat. And then for each rat, create a wicked roll attached to it. That's cool. Powers up all the rats that you have. Um, um, we got our Black Virtue. Um, target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. Gain two life. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Um, as we've said with the other virtues, like this one's big power is that it is a two mana removal spell as an adventure and then if you get to the point where you can play seven mana it becomes something useful um, we're going to put it under for, for Marin um, this is again a card that I don't know if we would actually play but I like that it exists um, we would want to consider it um, as with the other virtues I hope that you see play and constructed um, that's like the world I want to live in is where the virtues are all able to see play. Is it gonna happen? Uh, but like, I wanna live in that world. Um, when it, this enters the battlefield, create a rat. Um, so it's a three mana for three power on two bodies. When another creature you can control dies, it gets a plus 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 one counter. Seems fine. Um, warehouse tabby. Um, I love this art. It killed one rat. Oh no, you done messed up. Uh, when an enchantment you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, create a rat. Uh, and then this gains death touch until end of turn. Love that so much. Um, 
let's see this. Um, when an enchantment controls put in the graveyard, each opponent loses one life. Center drives with all those roll things. And then our final red, or our final black card before we get into red, the Witch's Vanity, two mana. Um, Saga, destroy target creature with mana value two or less. Create a food or create a wick, and then create a wicked roll attached. Seems mediocre. Um, obviously getting like removal is great early. Like this answers their two drop and then gives you some benefit later on. Um, sure. Um, belligerent of the ball. An ogre warrior. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more in battle of the control, this turn target creature gets plus one, plus O, oh, and menace. Um, seems fine. Um, medium. Um, we have an adventure up to one. Oh, be, I read be a path. Um, I get beat a path is a different thing. Um, up to one target creature um, can't block. Or up to two target creatures can't block this turn. Um, then this is a 4-4 four, four, um, for five with haste. Seems cool. Tempo them out, and then you get a big attacker on a later turn. Um, bespoke battle garb. Um, and corrupt creature has two plus two plus O, oh, and then at the beginning of combat on your turn, a two or more non lane permanents into the battlefield under your control this turn. Attach this up to one target creature. So you can get like a free equip. Um, we haven't talked about this with celebration yet, but one of the cool, the good things about rolls, um, we'll actually get, we'll skip and go to Charming Scoundrel. Like when this enters the battlefield, choose one. You can create a treasure token or discard a card, then draw a card, create a treasure token, or create a wicked roll attached to target creature you control. Like if you create a token or create that roll, two permanents enter the battlefield, so you get the free equip from Bespoke Battle Garb. Um, like that's some pretty cool synergy with a lot of the roll tokens. Um, I'm curious if that'll be good enough. Um, Celebration kind of has that going on. As a, as a struggle in general, but um, getting a free equip seems really nice. Um, okay, Boundary Land Ranger. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your power four or greater, you may discard a card to draw a card. Ugh. Ugh. Um, not huge on that. Um, cut in. Deals four damage to target creature for four mana. Then you can create a, create a young hero roll attached to up to one target creature. Um... Not only is Young Hero, like, one of the harder rolls, since it doesn't actually give you a buff right away, um, four mana for four damage to just a creature is is tight. Uh, Edgewall Pack. This looks like just like a, a picture of totally normal dogs, except for the rat riding up here. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you create the rat, sure. Uh, Embrith Veteran. Love this art uh, idea of, like, this, this knight training this kid. All in. Love it. Best in class. Never been done. Um, I love that vibe. Um, so this sacrifice, it, create a young hero. We just talked about young hero. Like, I don't know. Um, I do like the idea, though, that you could put, like, a young hero on this card from something else. And then pump it up. And then whenever this is ready, like, is going to die in combat, you could then sacrifice it to make somebody else a young hero. Like, seems okay. Um, flick a coin, deal one damage to any target, create a treasure, and then draw a card. If this wasn't three mana, I feel like this would be really good, like if this was two mana. But, alas. <laughs> Food fight? Yep, again. This is not an unset in all the best, way, all the best ways. Uh, artifacts you control you have two sack this artifact it deals damage to any target equals a one plus the number of permanents named food fight under your control so if you have ways of like creating token copies of this you could like make it so you're sacrificing an artifact and dealing like eight damage but you have to have ways of copying your enchantments um this would be like a pretty serious rebuild, but like this would be fun in Rashmi and Ragavan since you're getting the the artifacts. And we're already running ways in that deck to duplicate um, and create token copies of things, but this is not really what we want to be creating copies of, but it's a fun card or fun sounding card. Um, 
Frantic Bolt deals X damage to target creature where X is two, is two plus the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant cards, um, sorcery cards, and or have an adventure. If this could deal damage to a player, we would run this in Varen as a finisher. Um, but alas, we don't live in that world. Um, non crescendo creatures get plus two plus oh. Whenever a non token creature dies, create a rat. Sure. Um, Godric, cloaked reveler, celebration, or hasty, three, three for three. Then, as long as two or more non land permanents enter the battlefield under your control, it gets it. Uh, Becomes a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, flying, and pay red to make dragons you control get plus 1, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. Again, this is a card. I don't know if this is good, but I want to live in a world where that is the case. Like, in a world where this card on 3, attack him for 3, on turn 4, you pull, get you trigger celebration somehow, and then you are attacking with this and some other dragons that you somehow have. Um, and pumping them. That just seems fun. Um, that's the world I want to live in. <laughs> Grabby Giant. Love this art. He's just so happy. Um, two mana, create a treasure token, and then it's a reach. Second artifact or land to draw a card. Sure. Um, honestly, not necessarily anything to like write home about there, but um, it seems cool. Like, yeah, again, I don't really know if it's good enough, but it seems cool. Um, I like the ability to sacrifice, like, sack a treasure, draw a card. Like, seems good. Uh, Grand Ball Guest gets plus one, plus one, and Trample, as long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield. Um, fine. Again, I, I feel like my, my vibe with a lot of these celebration cards is just that they're fine. I fully anticipate, like, being extremely wrong on that and then getting demolished by these Unlimited, but, like, in general, my vibe is that they're just okay. Um, when this dies, create a rat that can't block. Um, discard your hand, then draw two cards. Um, and then the spell costs X less to cast, where X is the number of cards in your graveyard that are instant sorceries and or have an adventure. Um... If you can get that, like, this seems good in aggressive red lists, like a red burn list, where you are burning your opponent, you're getting down to basically no cards in hand, um, discarding zero cards to draw two, uh, and then that fuels the hearth elemental to then essentially be one red mana for a four or five. Um, that seems really good. There's a lot of stuff like Ren's Resolve that are two mana, exile the top two cards. You can play them until your next turn, uh, until the end of your next turn. So like, I don't necessarily know if this uh, would replace that, but I really like this card. Uh, I'm gonna, tr this, I play, I play a blue red wizards list um, in Explorer, which we actually might play some after this. Um, and this card seems right at home in that list. Um, I really want to try it. Imidane, the Pyro Hammer, love this. Imidane is one of the characters in the story. I love that she has this like wooden arm prosthetic, and then obviously has the Pyro Hammer, which is like the most me weapon that has ever existed. Um, as the as the person that like every character in D and D that I play, I don't like to use swords. I always want to use something else. Um, and the idea of the pyro hammer just seems super cool. Uh, this also goes, I was talking about my Pathfinder character for City on a Hill earlier. This also goes right at home with like the idea of the Magus. That like we're casting this fire spell through our weapon. I'm all in. Uh, but okay, what's the actual card do? Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control ta that targets only a single creature deals damage to it, that creature... Imidane deals that much damage to each opponent. So you lightning bolt your opponent's creature and then deal three damage to them as well. Um, the I, I saw like a Reddit post on this that was like, you could make a deck with cards that you think would trigger Imidane, but wouldn't. Um, like the only being able to target like a single creature thing um, is definitely going to trip people up. Um, 
it's this card is fun um i hope like i think they talked about this in the command zone like this seems like there's a lot of cool stuff you can do here there's a lot of cards even ones that we've seen and so far going through of like like this one frantic firebolt deal a whole bunch of damage to a creature then you get to also deal that damage to an opponent um kind of shapes up with like the burn list that we've talked about over here with hearth elemental um seems cool good enough we'll see um i really want to play against this in commander i want to see what people figure out to do with this card um it's the kind of deck i want to lose to um kindled heroism um target creature gets plus one plus oh gains first strike and then you scry one this is cool again I, this is a seems like a good combat trick for one mana um and yeah some more cool killian art um Corvald and the noble thief um create two treasure tokens and then exile up to three cards from target opponent's library um you may play those cards this turn um I'm not sure if this is good enough, but especially at the exact same mana as mana value as Rashmi and Raghavan. But we're going to put that here. Like, again, this this like hits right on the theme of what Rashmi and Raghavan want to do, which is play cards at the top of your opponent's library. And the fact that this, you get to do it for free. Uh, like, I mean, for free. That's step three of a saga. But, like, um, I like that idea. Um, so we'll see. We'll put it on that list. Will it get there? We'll see. When this enters the battlefield, you can pay one. If you do create a young hero roll, um, attach a target creature. So if you put this on itself, you get one attack with it, then it becomes a four or three. Um, as like the kid joins the band. I love that flavor. Um, uh, minecart daredevil. Fantastic art. A plus. Um, target creature gets plus two plus one till end of turn sure and then it's a four two uh, if there was something cool here on the creature side the, or the permanent side we'd definitely consider it but uh, target creature gets plus two plus oh create a monster roll um, monsters get plus one plus one and have trampled um, so this is a three one trample combat trick for one mana um uh, I like that a lot. Um, I think that between these two cards, Monstrous Rage and Kindled Heroism, there's going to be a lot of blowouts in Limited uh, for two one mana. It's going to make, like, blocking is going to be so hard because it's like, which way, which, what do you want to lose to, basically? Because they're always going to have the other one. Um, Raging Battle Mouse art is insane. The second spell you cast each turn costs two less. Um, and then celebration, beginning of combat on your turn, a two or more things into the battlefield, non things, non land permanents. Um, target creature gets plus one, plus one. That's like, I just like that payoff just seems so low. Like, it could give haste, it could do something else. It just feels like that's not enough. And the fact that the battle mouse only discounts your second spell, it doesn't reward you for casting three or more spells. Ugh. Um, rat catcher trainee um, create two rats and then as long as you turn it ha this has first strike uh, um, realm scorcher hell kite has bargain flying haste it's a six mana four five when it enters the battlefield if it was bargained add four mana of in any combination of colors that it has two to deal one damage to any target um I don't know. I want to love this. I want this to find a home. I want this to be playable. Um, is it? I don't know. Getting, like, essentially making this so that it only costs two mana is really cool. Um, and you, I like that it includes, if you have nothing else that you can do with that mana, it gives you something to do. I like that a lot. I want, this is the card I want to see play. Um, when this enters the battlefield, create two rats. It's a minute has menace as well. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, this gets plus one plus one, and then exile top card of your library. You can play it this turn, so you can like turn the rats into cards, um, or if you have any other creatures, seems cool. 
Um, red. I like that this also just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, red cap thief. Uh, when this enters, create a treasure token. So like again, that's like that triggers celebration because it's this create this is a non-land permanent, and then it creates another one. So I like that. If celebration is gonna have a chance, you need a lot of that style card. When this deals combat damage to a player, put a skewer counter on it. Then you may sacrifice it if you do. X out the top X cards, or X is the number of skewer counters on it. You can play those cards this turn. There's been a lot of back and forth about this one, especially compared to. Um, bomb at courier and so where the, i think as many people have said i think this is a lot weaker since you have to deal damage to get the card whereas bomb at courier you'd be like oh you blocked it okay i'll sacrifice it and get some cards so um i don't necessarily think this is gonna see play but want to believe um skewer st slinger um reach and then when it blocks or becomes blocked by a creature this deals one damage to that creature it's interesting that that effect is on a dwarf knight that's usually a card that like is reserved for other things but i guess the idea is that it like it throws a skewer at you and that's what deals the one damage sure um song of tottentons um so this is the we saw some cards with this character in them in black, so this creates a 1-1, one, one, hates X, 1-1 one, one, rats with this creature can't block. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. Um, this card is going in Perforos. Um, Perforos already runs a card called Firecat Blitz, um, which makes a bunch of tokens. This just gives you a way to make a whole bunch of tokens, deal a whole bunch of damage with Perforos, um, and then... Um, you can attack with those and deal a little bit more damage. Um, stone, oops, too high. Stone Splitter Bolt, bargain when it, it deals X damage. Target creature Planeswalker. If the spell is bargained, it deals twice that much damage instead. Um, so you could pay like three mana, sacrifice something, deal six, or four mana to deal three, double at the six. Again, if this could hit players as well. The fact that this is only creatures or planeswalkers, I think, would limit this play. Love this art of Rowan, though. Um, let's see. Tattered Ratter. Um, when a rat you control becomes blocked, it gets plus two, plus oh. That's fine. Torch the Tower. Beautiful art. Uh, it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If the spell was bargained, it deals three damage to that permanent, and you scry one. Um... And then if a permanent dealt damage by Torch the Tower would die this turn, exile it instead. So like this is one mana plus bargain to deal three. This would have to be So if you do one mana here. Well, sorry, well, first off, this can never be one mana. Um, because it's not to actually deal damage. But so this is two mana and you could or three mana total, two into X to deal four. Ugh. Um this just seems a lot better. You probably would play both of these in the deck of limited, but um, Twisted Fealty, gain control target creature, untap it, um, it gains haste, um, then you can create a wicked roll. Sure, this seems cool. Um, attached to up to one target creature, so it doesn't have to go on the creature that you took. Um, I like that a lot. Getting cool flavor. Um, you're turning, you're gaining control of something, then turning something else into the wicked witch. That is then taking control i like that vibe two-headed hunter um classic trope of the two-headed thing arguing with themselves and so target creature gains double strike until end of turn and then this has menace um some great themes um unruly catapult sure a, a defender in 04 it can tap to deal one damage and then when you cast an instant associate spell untap it there's a handful of this style effect um i like these a lot um is it good enough mm -hmm. But, like, seems fun. Um, our red virtue, virtue of courage. Um, this deals two damage to any target. Um, and then, if a source you control deals non combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library. You can play those cards this turn. Um, we're going to toss this in. Um, in a Perforos as well as in Varen. Um, Perforos obviously like has its ability where it deals two damage. And so this then becomes, uh, it becomes essentially 
play a creature, draw two cards that you can play this turn. Um, and then Varen just kind of needs finishers. And like, if this digs us, like this turns our damage into a way of looking at good cards. Um, I'm less confident that this will actually be played in the Varen versus Perforos, but um, I want to add it here just in case. Um, which is Mark, discard a card if you do, draw two cards, and then create a Wicked Roll. So this is our, like, um, Tormenting Voice variant for this set. This seems cool. Um, it replaces itself and pumps up a creature. Um, then our final red card, um, Witch Stalker Frenzy. Um, it deals five damage to target creature. It costs one less for each creature that attacked this turn. So you can attack with, like, three creatures and then hit something, hit one of their blockers for five. Eh. Um, that's okay, I guess. Um, next in green, Agatha's Companion. Bargain. When it enters the battlefield, if it was bargain, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Um, yeah, that seems okay. This art is super cool. I fully anticipate using this art as something <laughs> at some point in time. Uh, I'm like same art in these. Um, I fully anticipate using this for something, but uh, the card I think is just okay. Um, Beanstalk Worm, sure. Um, you play an additional land, and it's, it's explore, but you don't get to draw the card. Um, and then it's a five mana, five four reach. Eh. If this was actual explore. And you actually got to draw a card as well. I think this would be really good. Um, but the fact that it is not, I think, is just mediocre at best. Um, bestial Bloodline. Uh, enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two. And then um, return this from the graveyard to your hand. Um, it's okay. Blossoming Tortoise. Let's go. Um, this is one of my favorite cards for the set. We're going to go ahead and open it up in another window. When this enters the battlefield or attacks, mill three cards, return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Um, activated abilities of lands you control cost one less. Lands you control get current land creatures you control get plus one plus one. So, um, World Shaper um, is one of my favorite cards. I really like the. Um, the idea here that this thing attacks, you mill cards, and then you, when it dies, you get all of the lands from your graveyard. Uh, but the problem is that it has to attack to get that trigger. There's been a lot of times where it's like, um, you just don't necessarily get what you want. Um, because if you don't have lands in your graveyard when this comes into play, if they destroy it, you just get no payback. There's been plenty, or no payoff. Plenty of times I've played this another opponent wraths the board because something else is a threat um, and you just get no value um, although like the trade-off is this thing can get all of your lands versus the tortoise that can only get one um, and so like it's an interesting like which one of those effects is better i want to try it in marine in place of the um, world shaper Again, not necessarily sure if it's going to actually stay there, um, but I like the like I like that it mills right away and gets a land right away. Um, again, not sure if it's better, but that's the that's the what I'm thinking. Uh, we got an elemental raccoon, the ramble familiar mill mill seven cards for seven mana. Uh, it's a fetch quest. Uh, put a creature enchantment or land from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. So this is kind of like Vorinclex's saga, first the first thing of Vorinclex's saga. Um, and then this is a mana dork. Um, and then with two mana, discard a card, return this to its owner's hand. Um, this is card probably is going to see play in decks just because it's a two mana mana dork and then occasionally has upside. Um, like, is this good enough for Marin? Eh? But, like, it is a mana dork that has a payoff. And so, uh, even here, like, kind of the same in Chulane of, like, I don't think we want this there, but at the same time, it is a, it is a mana dork that, that gets us something. 
um, Brave the Woods. We can bargain. Um, the spell is bargain. Target land you control becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Then search your library for a basic land. Put it in your hand. If this put the card onto the battlefield, that would be so good. But the fact that it doesn't, um, and then you have to, you're turning something into a 3-3 three, three, that can then die. Yeah. Uh, this is also a card I could foresee being very good, and even though I think it's mediocre at best. Um, Commune with Nature, cool reprint. Um, Curse of the Werefox. Uh, so we saw the Werefox in white, and then this is the Create a Monstrous Roll Token Attached to Target Creature. Um, if you do, that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So this, you give your creature plus one, plus one, and trample, and then it fights, and so then you can attack with that creature. Seems cool. Elvish Archivist. Um, when in one or more artifacts into the battlefield and you control, put two counters on it that triggers once each turn. When one or more enchantments into the battlefield and you control, draw a card. Triggers only once. If this was the opposite way, we would probably play this in Rashmi and Raghavan because it would get us... Because we're going to be getting a treasure every turn in that deck, um, which would triggers the artifact part. The artifact part, though, is just mediocre we're not really interested in pumping up this creature we'd much rather have the card draw um feral encounter look at the top five you can exile a creature card put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order um, then you can cast the exiled card this turn um at the beginning of your next combat step target creature you control deals damage to target uh, equal to its power to up to one target creature you don't control so the two mana bite um, that, that you need to have a creature that survives till combat and then sometimes it'll let you cast a creature out of the top five cards of your library um, I think it's fine um, it's kind of where we're going to land um, Ferocious Werefox we got another one um, the monstrous roll token attached to something um, you control and then it's, this is a trampling 4-3 for 4 um I could see that being good. Like, this is an instance. So this does let you get your opponent in combat. Um, so you could, like, kill their creature and get some trample damage through if you're attacking. Seems cool. Um, graceful takedown. Interesting art. Love this, like, bridge fight. Any number of target enchanted creatures you control and up to one other target creature you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. That's a lot of words. Um, or a lot of, like, caveats. Gruff triplets. Oh, I think this card's fine. Uh, again, see play it limited, probably nothing else. Um, really good in the green white deck. Um, when this enters the battlefield, if it isn't a token, create two cop tokens that are copies of it. So you get three three threes for six. Um, when this dies, put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to its power on each creature you control named Gruff Triplet. Um, so. One of the places I'm at with my Rashmi and Raghavan deck is that this deck kind of wants to go in a bunch of different directions. And I'm not really sure which one of them I want to take it in. So um, on one side, you're creating artifacts. So this has like an artifact token theme. But then because you're creating tokens, you're able to do like these payoffs like Essex Essex. Black Fractal Bloom, or Adrix and Nev, or Brutaclad, where you have these like token payoffs, um, and then you're able to use those to do something. So it kind of becomes the like, is this an artifact deck, or is this a token deck? Is it like, does it happen to just use artifact tokens for stuff? I don't know. Because like, if this is a more broad token deck, like, this is, like, actually something that we would want to be playing in Rashmi and Raghavan. But I don't really know if it's good enough to see play. We're going to put it there just in case. Hamlet Glutton. Seven mana bargain. It costs two less if it, if it was bargain. So it becomes a five mana 6-6 six, six, as opposed to a seven mana 6-6. Six, six. Trample when it enters the battlefield. Game three life. Seems cool and limited. Um, hollow scavenger create a food token and then sack a food to get this plus two plus two uh, and activate only once each turn seems like a house and limited as well again love that food is being used to end the game I feel like I'm slouching down more and more um, food is being used to end the game not just pump or not just gain life 
Um, I think it's very cool that they are doing that um, and actually like getting somewhere. Um, Helen Gale Fang, Gale, Gale Fang has haste as long as you own a card in exile with adventure. Um, that seems really cool. Like a four mana, four, four vigilant haste. I like that a lot. Um, I, this is a card I would hope would see play in limited or in constructed. I, I don't know. It's no questing beast, um, but the ability for it to very easily have haste, um, if you cast an adventure card on turn three, seems really cool. The Huntsman's Redemption, love this art. Love that we have the Chain Veil, love that we have Garrick, like love this art so much um create a beast then you can sack a creature to search your library for a creature or basic land put it in your hand womp womp um Hello, it's like that second thing is almost so good um but it's the fact that like you're losing a creature to just put someone else in your hand like you get all of your mana so like theoretically this is turn four that you're getting this effect. You have to search your library for a four mana creature or cast it. Like maybe. Um, and then the, the third one is up to two target creatures get plus two, plus two and trample. Uh, like it's just like, it's again, I feel like this is just like almost good enough. I feel like if the second stage lets you get anything uh, or lets you put the card onto the battlefield with some stipulation, like, I feel like this would be really good. It just seems like that second stage just seems okay. Seems very, very meh. Um, Leaping Ambush, target creature gets plus one, plus oh, it gains reach. Another cool one mana trip. Oh, trick, and it also untaps it. Like, I like that a lot. Um, Knight at, of the Sweet's Revenge. Uh, when this enters the battlefield, create a food. Food you have has tap, add a green mana. Then you can pay seven mana tap, sacrifice this to give creatures you control plus X plus X, where X is the number of foods you control. I love, again, love this payoff for a food. Like that is giving you damage in exchange for keeping your food and not turning them into life. Love it. Um, Red Tooth Genealogist enters the battlefield, create a royal roll, plus one plus one and hex proof attached up to another target creature. If this could go on itself, I think it would be really cool. Uh, the fact that it can't means you do have to have something else that you want to give that to. Eh. Uh, when enchantment into battlefield control, you may pay two. If you do return this from the graveyard to your hand, that's okay. Um, Return of the Wilds. Uh, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, um, create a human or create a food. You get two of those. Um, I don't know if there's any chance of like a mono green ramp. I could see this playing a part in that, but I don't know. Um, Root Rider Fawn, great limited card. Um, tap, add green, or you can filter a mana into a mana of any color. Sure. Royal Treatment, target creature, you control gains Hexproof, then you create a Royal Roll attached to it, and so it makes it so it can't be targeted this turn, it pumps it, and then you have the Ward that sticks around. I like it. Uh, Sentinel of Lost Lore, into the battlefield, choose one or more, return target card you own in exile that has an adventure to your hand, so you get to do the adventure again if you want. Put target card you don't own in exile with adventure in the bottom of its opponent's library. Then you exile target player's graveyard. I like this a lot. Like if, if I was playing an adventure commander deck, this would be uh, like instantly would go in. Queen Skywalker, how's it going? Um, outside of that, probably not good enough, but I like it a lot. Um, this giant archer, um, birds for scale. Um, when you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, create a food. Oh, um, seems okay. Um, shout out to Deanna. She did have a great Minecraft stream earlier in the day. Uh, you can find that on our channel. Um, spider food. Um, I feel like this person's head is in a, like, I guess it's facing forward with how they're, but they're like their body just like makes it look like it's facing backwards to me for some reason. I don't know why. Destroy up to one target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying, create a food. So this is our plummet variant. Um, it's just okay. 
Storm Killed Vanguard. Destroy target artifact or enchantment um, for two mana as you bear down. Um, let's see what they did there. Um, I made my stance on puns well known. Um, Storm Killed Vanguard can't be. The lights just flicker? Or was that just me? Um, when an aura enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Um, this is really cool with the rolls. Like, every time you make a roll, this lets you net a card. Um, I like it. Um, stream still? Yeah, okay, we are still going. Uh, just, like, making sure that, like, again, I'm not sure if I was crazy or what, but... Um, Territorial Witch Stalker, beginning a combat on your turn. If you control a creature with power four or greater, this gets plus one, plus O, oh, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Eh. Thunderous debut. Love this art. Um, eight mana bargain. Look at the top 20 cards of your library. You can reveal two cards from among them. As well as bargain. Put the revealed cards on the battlefield. Otherwise... Um, put the revealed cards in your hand, then shuffle. So it's kind of a tooth and nail. Um, has to be seven man or has to be eight mana. Um, and then you have to bargain it to put the cards into play. Um, yeah, it seems like a cool, like tooth and nail at home. Um, if that's an effect that you're wanting in your deck or wanting another one in your deck. Um, uh, you went and watered the lawn. Nice. Let's keep that grass alive. Um, what little grass we have that's actually still alive. Let's get, try to keep it alive. Uh, Titanic growth, cool reprint. Love this art. The idea of the fairy. It's very Tinkerbell of like the fairy has now become um, huge. Uh, Toadstool admirer, ward. Um, put a counter on it. Sure. Tough cookie. Uh, I love it. Uh, um, when it enters the battlefield, create a food token. Sure. Um, and then target non-creature artifact becomes a 4-4 artifact creature. So you can turn the food into a 4-4. Then you can sack this to gain three life because it's a food. Um, I like this a lot. There's a lot of food synergy. So there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, I like that. Um, Troublemaker Ufi. Um, enters the battlefield if it was bargained. Exile target artifact or enchantment in opponent controls. Like, are you going to, like, hit their one ring with this? Like, it seems, oh, seems like something that you could do. Um, sure. Up the beanstalk. This enters the battlefield. Um, and whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, draw a card. Um, the fact that this replaces itself right away is really cool. Um... We're going to toss this on the Hamza list um, just because Hamza makes all of our creatures cheaper. So we can cast like multiple five mana spells a turn to draw multiple cards. Um, not sure if that would make the list, but we're going to toss it there just to keep track of it. Um, Verdant Outrider can't be blocked by creature with power two or less this turn. So it makes it so they can't easily trade for it cool art again um we have our green of virtue virtue of strength um, return target creature or land from your graveyard to your hand then if you tap a basic land for mana it produces three times that much mana instead uh, um seven mana to then start doubling your or start tripling your mana like we already we can play um nyx bloom ancient already um and again it's cool that this has an adventure, but I feel like the adventure is not impactful enough compared to like the red or black ones that were removal. Uh, and then our last monocolored card, welcome to Sweet Tooth. Uh, two mana, create a human, create a food, then put a plus plus one counter on target creature where X is the number of food you control. Again, it seems really cool with the green white foods from uh, Lord of the Rings. I don't know if this would be I definitely don't think this is powerful enough for like historic, but it seems cool with that list. So that is all the monocolored. Take a quick drink and then we're going to get into our um, multicolor cards. And so first off, we have Agatha because it was Agatha all the long. Bum, 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 ba, dum, bum. Two mana, one, one. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha's power. 
I can't reduce them to less than one mana. Um, and then um, for six mana, other creatures you can control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and haste. This is reduced automatically because of Agatha. Um, so this is really only a five mana ability. Um, and it could be reduced down to just being one or just a red and a green. It seems cool. Uh, I like Agatha a lot. Um, I like that we're getting the witchy stuff going on in this set. I wish we would have got curses um, since Deanna has a curse deck for commander, but um, alas. Uh, Apprentice's Folly. Um, choose target non-token creature you control that doesn't have the same name as a token you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary and is a reflection in addition to its other types and has haste. So that then for you do that twice, then you sacrifice all reflections. So it'd be cool in Rashmi and Dragavan, except um, you then have to get rid of it. So you really are only getting like one turn with the the extra token, um, which isn't great. Um, Wedding Crash or Ash Party Crasher. Um, Got to catch them all. Uh, this is like the Cinderella that they're doing for this deck or this set, which I really love. Um, and so when, uh, and this is also the signpost on common for draft. So it's a two mana, two, two with haste when it enters the battle or when it attacks, if two or more non land permanents into the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on it. I think that's super cool. Probably one of the better celebration cards. Um, the fact that you can like attack with this on two and then attack for it on three, triggering the celebration to make it a three, three. Maybe put a roll on it as well on turn three. That seems really cool. Uh, Ariette the Char of the Charmed Apple. Um, a three mana, two, four. Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. Um, so a little like, protection there. Then at the beginning of your instep, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, or X is the number of auras you control. Um, this is probably the card that, like, if I was going to build a commander, it would be this. Um, we already, I already have, um, Brenna as my black-white commander deck, but, like, I love that, hey, you just get all these auras, and then you just, like, zap all of your opponents, um, and gain life. I think this card is super cool. I love this art as well. Um, Fosbane Troll, two mana, or two black red for a 4-4. Four, four. There we go. When does the battlefield with a monster roll attached to it? So it enters the battlefield as a 5-5 five, five with trample. Then you can sack an aura attached to it to have it fight target creature you don't control. If that creature would die, exile it, and then activate only as a sorcery. So this kind of lets you put a roll on this, then pay one, remove the roll. It fights something. Then you put a new roll on it, and it keeps going. It's a thing. Um, the Goose Mother. Love this card. Um, that art is insane. As a reminder to everyone, um, the dumbest person in Jurassic Park is the kid at the beginning that doesn't think birds are scary. Because um, that kid has clearly never fought a goose before. Uh, and so the Goose Mother enters the battlefield with X plus one, plus one counters. Um, then you create half that many, um, half X food tokens. And then it, when it attacks, you can sack a food to draw a card. Super cool. Love this. Um, all about the goose. Um, I also love that it's a 2-2 to begin with. Um, so it's always, like, doing something at least. Like, you're not, like... It's not like Hydroid Crisis where, like, it, you could... You couldn't just cast this for its mana cast. So, the, like, the goose you could and just get a 2-2. Don't know why you would do... But, like, it's like if you had food other ways, you could do that. And then attack to sack those foods. I think that's super cool. Um... Greta, Sweet Tooth Scourge. Um, this is our Hansel and Gretel um, and is the black-green signpost uncommon. Um, one black-green. When it enters the battlefield, create a food. Then you can sack a food to put a plus plus one counter on target creature. Activate only a sorcery. Or you can sack a food to draw a card and lose two life. Love it. Um, again, the Abzan food um, stuff from Lord of the Rings like has a lot of really cool pickups from this set if you don't want to keep it themed as Lord of the Rings. Um, Hilda of the Icy Crown. Let it grow. Let it grow. Um, so one white green. White green. One white blue. 
um, for a 3-4. When you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you could pay one. If you do, create either create a 4-4, four, four, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control, or a scry two and draw a card. Um, the fact that this is like a win con, like, and you can just like start dumping counters onto creatures you control seems super cool. Um, there's plenty of ways to tap your stuff, make a couple four fours, and then start like holding down, like like stun counter out their creatures, and then just attack for a bunch. Um, it also like scries two and draws a card. Love it. Um, Johan, Apprentice Sorcerer. This is the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, not exactly the most hidden of the ones. Uh, two um, blue red. This is our signpost uncommon. Uh, you can look at the top card of your library at any time. Once per turn, you may cast an instant sorcery spell from the top of your library. Um, it's okay. Um, I'm not nearly as excited about this as a signpost uncommon as I am for the other ones. Likeness Looter, one in a black for a 1-1 one, one flyer. Draw a card, discard a card, and then you can pay X to have it become a copy of target creature. In your graveyard, mana value X, except that it has fly and this ability. Activate only as a sorcery. This seems cool. Like, we had, like, Lazav um, in our return to return to Ravnica. Uh, that could become a copy of, a, I think, a legendary creature in your graveyard. It might have been anything. Um... um yeah, Lazav the Multifarious. Um, become a copy of target creature in your graveyard. Um, I said this name is Lazav, and then it's legendary. So this one was really good because it kept the name Lazav. So that meant that like you could turn this into something, and then you could play another copy of the card. Uh, so you could actually have two in play. Um, for Lightness Looter, you can't do that. This just becomes a copy, so you can't like turn this into a copy of Shieldred and play a Shieldred. So, uh, of course, if they're not legendary, you do you. But um, Neva, stalked by sh Nightmares, um, are signposts uncommon for white-black. Uh, I've been saying signposts uncommon. So the idea is that for limited, uh, it's like if you're doing draft or seal, the idea is that every two-color pair has a card that isn't uncommon with the intention of telling you, hey, if you're going to play this, this is the type of effect you want to look for. That's what the signposts and commons are. So, um, Sepa Shadow enters the battlefield, return target creature or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Sure. And then when an enchantment you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus plus one counter on this and scry one. Seems cool. Um, it's a little underpowered to start with. Um, but if you can bargain something like the turn after you play this, like, you're in pretty good shape. Um, Obeyra, Dreaming Duelist, are what? Blue, black, signpost. Flash, flying. When another fairy enters the battlefield under control, each opponent loses one life. Love it. Yeah, great card. Um, just playing your fairies drains out your opponent. Um, really like that. Oh, and I think um, Nevea is Sleeping Beauty. Um, and then... I don't know what Obeira is supposed to be their take on. Uh, that's one I don't know. Uh, Rowan, Scion of War. Uh, we'll also go ahead and talk about Will, Scion of Peace here, because um, they're mirrors of each other. So Rowan, one, black, red, um, for a 4-2 with Menace. Then you can um, tap it, have spells um, you cast this turn that are black or and or red cost x less to cast where x is the amount of life you lost this turn activate only as sorcery so this doesn't give you mana this is a permanent spell reduction and so scrolling down here to will um very similar cards that this one blue white with vigilance for a two four so they're mirrors of each other and then spells you cast uh, this turn that are white or black cost x less to cast White or blue, uh, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. So Will is all about gaining life. Rowan is about you losing life. Uh, there's an argument for Rowan um, going into Marchesa, the Black Rose. Um, one of my favorite commander decks. Um, since that deck wants you to have a low life, you're typically um, paying life um, to do stuff. And so... I think there's a good argument there that Rowan belongs there. Um, I think in standard, Will is going to be a lot better than Rowan. Um, and I think the farther back you go, um, 
the better Rowan is going to get, like the bigger card pool. There's just not a lot of ways to pay, consistently pay life in standard, um, where there's a lot more ways to gain life. Um, Vigilance, I think, also works really well with this ability of like, like Rowan is statted to be an attacker. It's a 4-2 with Menace, uh, but that means you can't use the ability versus Will has Vigilance. And so you can attack with Will, then in your second main phase, use the ability. Uh, but we'll see. Um, gaining life is also not always great if you don't have something to do with it. Like just having a higher life total um, doesn't get you anywhere because your life is not a score. Um, and yeah, so I don't know if that's like, if Will is like gonna necessarily get you anywhere or Rowan for that matter. But I like the idea of like, uh, they talked about this in the command zone. Like you pay something, gain three life, tap Will, your next card's cheaper. And then like you get to the point where you're casting like Blue Sun Zenith for a whole bunch to like draw out your opponent. Um, similar with Rowan, you're casting like Exsanguinate or something to like gain back all the life. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of cool stuff you can do there. Um, I like Rowan a lot for Commander. Um, I'm not huge on this art um, in specific. I think the alternate art for this one is super cool. I don't know if it'll show it. This one. I think this art is super cool. Uh, but yeah, so that's Will and Rowan. Next, we have Ruby, who's Red Riding Hood. Um, Sign post for green, red. Um, haste, when it attacks, if you control a creature with power four or greater, this gets plus two, plus two, and then it taps for red or green mana. Um, seems cool. Um, only so much. Like, it's a mana dork, which is good. And then if you're not using it for mana, you are attacking. Like, and hopefully it, you've powered out uh, something with power four or greater on turn four. And so on turn five, you're attacking with that and a pumped up ruby. That seems cool. Um... Let's see, we have Share of Numbing Depths. Um, so this is our signpost for blue-white. Um, when this enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, put a stun counter on it. Then when you tap one or more untapped creatures or opponent controls, draw a card. This triggers once each turn. Um, again, kind of Ice Queen. Um, you get your um, Snow Witch um, type stuff. We saw the actual, like, I, um, it's not, is it? is Hilda. Uh, I was thinking Helena. Uh, you have Hilda as like the mythic version of this style thing. And so that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, I like this a lot. I, I like this tempo. You're just trying to like lock things down. There's not proliferate in this set, but there's a lot you can do with stun counters. Uh, Sir Armut the Redeemer. Um, Three green white for our signpost. When this enters, create the monster roll attached to another target creature. Then enchanted creatures you control get plus one plus one. Super good signpost. So like this essentially gives a creature a plus two plus two and trample, and then pumps up everything else that's already been um, been targeted. Um, yeah, not not really sure what this is supposed to be fairy tale wise, but it's a cool looking card. Um, Talion, the Kindly Lord. Um, having Kindly in a blue-black creature is just like, if you say so. Um, this is flying. When it enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses 2 life and you draw a card. Um, Command Zone did a breakdown, and like for Commander, you basically always want to choose two, which is kind of sad that it's like cut and dry. Um, but I like this a lot. I don't know if this would see play. Um, I've referenced it a couple times during the episode or during the chat, but like Shieldred is just like such a good four mana card that I don't really know why you would play this over or play. Yeah, I don't know why you'd play this over playing Shieldred. Um, it just doesn't like seem like enough. But I don't know. Um, I like this card a lot. Um, Totten Tons, we finally got it. The Pied Piper um, as our red, uh, red black, um, uncommon. Um, shout out to being a warlock and a bard. Well done. Uh, when this or another non token creature you control dies, create a rat. And then target rat, attacking rat you control, gains death touch. Love it. Um, um, 
Troven, Gutsy Explorer. We got a Veldelkin, um, came in from Ravnica um, as our signpost. This is Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, and so for three mana for a 1-3 that you can tap to add blue and green. Spin this mana only to cast spells with mana value 5 or greater, uh, or spells with X in the mana value, and then it also is a looter. Um, so you play this on three. Turn four, you play your land, cast a six drop. Like, that seems really good to me. Um, I like that one a lot. Um, Will, Silent Peace, we already talked about. Um, I think Will also has really cool... Yeah, I like this art a lot as well. Um, as has kind of just recently been the case. Lots of really cool alternate arts coming through. Um, Yenna, Red Tooth Regent. Um... Another target enchantment you control, or choose an enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Um, create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary. Um, if that token is an aura, untap um, Yenna and then scry two. So you kind of can keep going if you're creating copies of um, of auras. This is really cool. Um, lots of token synergies. Like you have a doubling season in play, you tap Yenna make a copy of doubling season, which is actually two copies of doubling season. And then you just kind of go off, um, because you now have a bunch of doubling seasons, um, or, um, uh, anointed processions or like, there's so many cards that do that. And so seems good. Um, the Luna grand squall, um, for teamer blue, green, red, um, trampling four, four, um, uh, and then as an adventure, you can mill seven cards, put all cards that have an adventure from among the milled cards into your hand. Potentially could be like a draw seven. Obviously that's like magical Christmas land. Realistically, you're probably hoping to get two to three consistently. Uh, and then, like I said, this is a trampling four, four, and then permanent spells you cast that have an adventure cost one less to cast. Um, so this doesn't make the adventure cheaper, but it makes the permanent afterwards cheaper. Or instead, you could just not cast the adventure. Um, so that's cool. Then um, here we get into a cycle of cards that are one color with an off-color adventure. Um, I say cycle. They're kind of like, oh no, there's a handful. Um, I think there's an uncommon cycle and a rare cycle. Um, Callus Cell Sword. Target creature you control deals damage equal to his power to another creature, then sacrifice it. Um, burn together. Um, when this enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter for each creature that died under your control this turn. So you can have this sacrifice something and then have this come in as a 3-3. Three, three. Sure. Um, cruel Somnophage. Um, can't wake up. Target player mills four cards. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Sure. Um, decadent Dragon. Um, expensive taste. Um, exile the top two cards of target opponent's library face down. You may look at and play those cards for as long as they remain in exile. Um, cool. Love this type of effect. Um, I'm a sucker for the Ganti ability. Um, and so... Always up for, for more of that. Um, when this attack, it's flying trample, and then when this attacks, you create a treasure token. It's no gold span dragon, but like, that's some cool value. Um, devouring Sugar Ma. Um, um, four mana, or it's a two mana have for dinner, create a human and a food. Uh, there's a lot of decks that you just want resources, and so having two tokens might just be very powerful. Uh, and then for four mana, this is Menace and Trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sack an artifact, enchantment, or token if you don't tap it. Um, so to get the six mana for four, you have to have tokens lying around um, to be able to attack with it or have a way of tapping, untapping it. I think we've come a long way from that effect being like good enough for standard, but who knows. Elusive Otter, it is adorable. Um, a plus art. Um, for X and a green, distribute X plus plus one counters on any number of target creatures you control. And then this has prowess. Um, creatures with power less than its power can't block it. Um, that's so cool. Love it. Um, Frolicking Familiar. It's another otter, and this one has a hat. I love it. Um, blow off steam. For, deals one damage to any target. Then flying when you cast an instant or sorcery spell. Um, this gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. 
Trip. Uh, Ginger Brad Hunter um, for two and a black. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. And then it enters the battlefield, creates a food, just fine. Heat Flame Duelist. Love this art. Um, I love the the heat flames, I guess, is what these are. Uh, this deals three damage to any target, and the instant and sorcery spells you cast have life link. Yes. Super cool. Love it. Grand Soul Fire Grandmaster type style. Um, again, it's just like this is in a weird place because the creature is cheaper than the adventure. So you kind of want to like play one of these and then use the rest of them for their adventure, um, I guess is the idea. Um, Emma Dane's Recruiter. Um, five mana, create two tokens. Um, and then when this enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and haste. So, like, you can create your tokens, then cast this, pump them up. Uh, this does give itself haste. So this attacks as a 3-2. So, that's something. Oh, we finally made it to Killian, the Fey-Blooded. Uh, so we referenced this earlier. Killian is one of the main story characters going forward. Um, it's going to be a huge part of the upcoming arcs. Um, Birthright Boon, um, to mana, search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle. And then Killian is a three mana double striker. Other creatures you control get plus one plus O oh for each aura or an equipment attached to Killian. So you want Killian to go big. Lots of auras and equipment on him. And then you also want a lot of other creatures for him to pump up. I don't know. There's a lot of red-white equipment decks. I don't necessarily know if this pushes any of the other ones out. Um, but I do like that this works with both auras and equipment. Um, I like that you can build it, build this as an aura commander. Um, and it, it's cool that it rewards you for also going wide. Again, is that good enough? I don't know. Um, I love these other arts of Killian. Um, a plus, well done. Um, Mosswood Dread Knight, um, two mana, draw a card, lose a life, and then when this and when this has a trampoline three two, when it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. So you can kind of like loop this. So you draw your card, play it, it dies, draw your card, replay it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I like that a lot. I don't necessarily, again, know if it's good enough to see play, but I want to believe, right? That's kind of that, that's kind of the vibe. Um, stolen goodies. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Picnic Ruiner. Um, shout out to that. Um, yeah. Stolen, stolen goodies. Distribute three plus one plus one counters on any number of target creatures you control. And with attacks, if you control a creature with power four or greater, this gains double strike. It's cool. I like the style of card. I don't, again, I don't know if it's good enough. Um, pollen Shield Hair. Adorable. Um, this for one green for hair raising. Made my sense of punch well then. Uh, target creature you control gains vigilance and plus X plus X. So X is the number of creatures you control. And then the rabbit itself pumps creature tokens. Yeah. I like it. Um, is it good enough? I don't really know, but it seems cool. Questing Druid. Um, exile the top two cards of your library. Until your next instep, you may draw those cards, or you may play those cards. Cool that it hits lands. Um, and then Questing Druid. When you cast a red, sorry, when you cast a white, blue, black, or red spell, put a counter on it. Um, cool it grows um is that good enough i don't know um scalding viper this is so prismari um from strixhaven so one in a green return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand when you cast a spell with mana value three or less this deals one damage um to that play or whenever an opponent casts a spell mana value three or less it deals one damage to that player yeah um seems okay um shrouded shepherd Creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus one. Cool. Um, this enters the battlefield. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two. Sure. Fine. Um, spell Scorn Coven. Um, 
return target spell to its owner's hand. So it's a nice counter spell. And then you can also play it and it becomes a creature. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. I like this one a lot. Like this is a very cool, like you cast or you make them return the spell that was gonna stabilize them back to their hand. Then you spell play spell sworn coven and then that makes them discard the card if that's the only card they had. That seems super good. Um, I like this one a lot. Um, it also can just like eat a card out of their hand if you do, if they're not like playing anything. So, Tempest Heart, cool art, Elemental Elk. Yes, I agree. Um, draw two cards, then discard two cards. That's fine. Um, and then Trample when you cast a spell with mana value five or greater, put a plus two plus two counter on it, or plus put a plus one plus one counter on it. Sorry. Um, yeah, it seems like good. Seems like. Again, it's, it's, this is powerful because it is a four drop. Uh, it works well as like, again, like these are not necessarily intended to be the signposts, but like you can kind of see again, this works very well with five mana spells. Play this on four, five mana, and you get next on the next turn, you get the effect. So um, thread bind click. Um, Three mana, destroy target tapped creature, and then flying. Sure, cool art. Um, twinning twins. Um, the one to twin power is activate. Um, so for one and a blue, exile target non creature, or target non token creature, return to the battlefield on its control at the beginning of the next end step. So it lets you like save your own creature. Um, or like if they're going to pump up theirs, it like makes it so you can fizzle that spell. Then this is a flying 4-4 four, four with flying Vigilance and Ward 1. I like this a lot. Seems cool. Adventures are powerful because you get both halves. So you don't have to pick a spell that does just one of these effects. Um, this seems cool um, for Constructed. Woodland Acolyte. Um, put target permanent card from your graveyard on top of your library. So you're like setting up your next draw. And then when this enters the battlefield, draw a card. Um... Waco Fire, how's it going? Building an adventure deck. I, man, maybe. Uh, we might be tossing together some adventures for uh, standard or scene uh, or like revisiting the like explorer adventure deck uh, with these new cards. Uh, I don't know if I, how much of that I actually have for that shell. I think I have a good chunk of it um, on Arena, but, uh, but yeah, so we might be going in. Um, Franco, how you doing? What are you playing, watching, listening to? Um, what cards are you excited about for? Um, Wilds of Eldraine. Um, we have talked through all of the colored cards. Uh, we're getting into our artifacts. Uh, and then we're going to jump over and look at the commander cards. So, um, Agatha Soak Soul Cauldron. Um, two mana. Um, you spend mana as though or mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. When a creature you control, the plus one plus one creatures you control with a plus one plus one counter on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agassiz's Soul Cauldron. Um, and then exile target card from a graveyard. Um, when a creature is exiled this way, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Um, we're going to put this under Hamza. Um, I like this a lot. Is it good enough? Um, I don't know. Like, we don't necessarily have a lot of cards in Hamza that have activated abilities, so it's not as good there. But, like, the fact that this, like, puts counters on things and uh, and gives us count like, it gives us counters and then also gives us abilities if we happen to hit things, it seems slow, but potentially okay. Um, yes, this is the new set. Where the one... I think the full spoilers finished last week uh, or this past week. Um, and so then we, um, I'm not actually sure, even sure when it actually releases. Um, I want to say it's relatively soon. Um, one second. I have Arena going in the background. Yeah, the season ends on Arena in five days. Oh, that's, not, that's the end of the month. Let's see. Eight days is how much time is left on the Mastery Tree. So, um, so coming out next week then um 
Let's see, Candy Trail. Um, when this enters the battlefield, scry one. Then you can bargain this. It becomes great bargain fodder. Uh, or scry two. Um, and then you can sacrifice this since it's a food to gain three life and draw a card because it's a food and a clue. I love that so much. Um, collector's Vault. Draw a card, then discard a card. Create a treasure token. Um, um, Ariette's Tempting Apple. Four mana. Um, legendary Artifact Food. When this enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste. You can sacrifice this to gain three life or sacrifice this to have an opponent lose three life. Um, so we're putting this in Ozgear um, as a great reanimation target. You only get to keep one of the apples because of the legend rule. Um, but... I like that you still get to like take two of your opponent's creatures. Uh, this being this being uncommon for being such an important thing is super weird to me. So like we haven't gotten to the crown yet, but the crown is rare and the cauldron is mythic. But yet the apple that's like potentially the most important one from the story is just an uncommon. Um, it seems weird to me. Um, Ginger Brood is back. Shout out to them. Um, Hilda's Crown of Winter, so pay one and tap this to tap target creature. Activate, um, this ability costs one less to activate during your turn. So during your turn, it's a free tap. Um, then you can sacrifice this to draw a card, or three sacrifice to draw a card for each tapped creature your opponent's controls. So like a lot of times, you're, this might just be a, like, have this sit out and eventually sacrifice it for three to draw a handful of cards. Um, sure. The Iron Crag. Uh, so this is a two mana mana rock. When a leg then when a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, um, you may have the Iron Crag become a legendary equipment artifact named Everflame Hero's Legacy. If you do, it gains equip three, and equipped creature has plus three plus three, and then loses all other abilities. Um, this seems like a cool mana rock for the um, Killian deck of like this lets you ramp into some of your other stuff and then you eventually can choose um to have this become an equipment like sure cool art for um prophetic prism um uh, storm crow guide soul guide lantern sir Genji the meal ender love that we're getting a sir Genji card uh, two mana three one it has trample hexproof and haste as long as an opponent controls a planeswalker then whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on this and scry one. Yes. Um, and then um, you can sacrifice this to gain life equal to its power. Super cool. Um, I love that like food gains you three life. This is a food and has three power. So it's going to gain you three life out of base. Uh, food creatures, yeah, there's so many food creatures in this set. Um, it's super cool. Uh, love that this card also snipes down your opponent's planeswalkers. Uh, and that this card uh, works really well with treasures. Like, you play this, sacrifice three treasures, put three counters on it, scry th one three times, and then cast something. Like, I like that a lot. Uh, and again, I I've kind of said this throughout. I love that this set is almost an unset in so many cool ways, just like in terms of theme. Like there's so many food, um, like monsters. I just love that so much. Um, three bowls of porridge, uh, treasure, uh, food, clue tokens have made art. Yeah, artifact synergy is crazy after they introduced all of those. Um, so this is a food, um, is it too hot? Too, uh, too cold or just right. Love it. Um, so choose two and tap it. Choose one that hasn't been chosen. Deal two damage to a creature. Tap a creature or sacrifice this to gain three life. Um, I think that that's really cool. Um, this fits well in the blue white list because of the tap ability. And then you also have this damage output. I think that's cool. Um, Crystal Grotto, cool reprint. Um, edge wall in. Um, I like that Edgewall Inn is getting a card. After last time we were on Eldraine, we got Edgewall Innkeeper. Now we actually get the Inn. Um, this enters the battlefield tapped. You choose a color. It adds one mana to the chosen color. Then you can tap it to return target creature with an adventure from your graveyard to your hand. 
Um, it entering tapped and being only one mana is rough. Um, yeah, it's cool that it gets you back in adventure, but like, that's that's rough. Um, yeah. Let's see. We also are getting a set of enemy colored creature lands. Um, Restless Bivouac. Um, when this ended, they all into the battlefield tapped, add for two mana, one mana of two different colors. Yes, creature lands. Let's go. I love this art um, for Restless Bivouac. I think this also had a cool alternate art. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Um, so this enters tapped, and then it becomes pay three mana. It becomes a 2 2 red and white ox. Um, and then when it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Like that. That's pretty cool. Um, Restless Cottage for green, black, uh, two green, black, becomes a 4-4. Four, four. And then when it attacks, create a food and exile it to one target card from a graveyard. So it kind of does a, um, what, what's the hive? Um, I'm just used to calling it hive. Um, the, I think that was from Adventures in the Forgotten Realm. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. There we go. Got there. Um, it kind of does that same style thing. You're exiling a card from an opponent's graveyard. This is more power. Um, that's a 3-2. This is a... F oh, no, it's a 3-3. Three, three. This is a 4-4. Four, four. Um, Hive has Menace, but this also creates a food. Um, so that's something. There's some good trade-off there. Um, Restless Fortress. I think this is C Castle Ardenvale, um, the White Castle. Um, from the first set, I think is what this is supposed to be. Um, this becomes a 1-4, and then when it attacks, defending player loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Like, this seems super cool in a, like, control list. Um, seems like a really cool finisher. Again, that alternate art is super cool. Um, we're gonna put this on Kamiz. Um, I think this is the first card we've added to Kamiz, this set review. Um... And so I like this a lot. It's just an attacker that that drains when you attack. I like that a lot. Um, Restless Spire. Um, two or just a blue and a red. Two total mana to activate. The cheapest one. Yeah. Um, becomes a 2-1 with as long as it's your turn. This creature has first strike. Then when it attacks, you scry one. Cool. Love this art. What's the alternate one for this? Uh, yeah, that's also super cool. I like that it's the same building. It's just like more destroyed now. Um, that's pretty fun. Um, and then our final card, um, Restless Vine Stock. Um, five mana, three green, blue. Um, becomes a five, five plant with trample. And then when it attacks, up to one target creature's base power, three, three, until end of turn. Base power and toughness, three, three. Um, cool. Uh, creature lands are very powerful. Uh, just for the effect that they give you a really good attacking creature um, that, like, you just have as part of your lands. The same reason that, like, the modal double face cards were so good. Um, in terms of my favorites, um, this is not power ranking. This is just my favorites. Um, it's Restless Fortress, Bivouac, Cottage, Vinestock, and Spire. I think those are my, my picks for favorite. Uh... I could see, like, Vine Stock and Cottage being really good in standard. I know, and I know there's a lot of people that have talked up Bivouac is probably the best one in the cycle, just since it starts. Because it does a, um, oh, there's a green red land that I used to see play in Modern um, back in the day. This kind of does a similar vibe to that. Um, but yeah, I could see, I think Bivouac might be the strongest. Uh, when it comes to actual, like, scene play. Um, but we'll see. Obviously, like, Esper control is, like, a common thing, and so Restless Fortress could see definitely see play there. Um, versus Tap Lands kind of hurt red-white the most, since they're the most aggro color or color combo. Uh, and then, yeah, not new cards, but love these full art lands. Um, keep it up. This island is my favorite of the batch. Um, I think it's the island, the plains, um, and then the mountain, swamp, forest. Those are my picks. And then, yeah. Uh, then here we just kind of have some alternate arts. We looked through a lot of these already, so we're not going to really, like, 
chat about them, but just going to scroll through very quick uh, and kind of just like take a glance at them. We didn't talk about this earlier, but love that we're getting a teamer adventure commander for people that want to run that list. Um, very cool. I love how fancy this dragon looks. It's very decadent, you could say. Um, let's see. Love this art. I think they look super cool. The, the rabbit looks so mad. Um, and then here's just our extended arts. So that is the standard set for Wilds of Eldraine. Um, within every pack of Wilds of Eldraine, um, there is going to be an enchanted tale. Um, which is going to be a enchantment from Magic's Past that is getting reprinted. Um, these are legal to play in Limited, are not necessarily legal in Standard. Um, this is very similar to what they did um, initially in Strixhaven with the Mystical Archives, and they did the Retro Artifacts in Brothers War. Then they did the um, Legendary Creatures in March of the Machine. Um, and so we're getting these um, here as well. Some of these are pre-banned and historic, um, just, you know, because. Um, so like I said, these are not new, so we're not going to really dwell on these, uh, but we're going to just kind of scroll through, and then we're going to jump over and take a look at the commander cards and chat through those. So love Blind Obedience. Underplayed card in Commander, IMO. Um, it just hoses certain decks so well. Um I also had a game of Commander where I think this did 13 damage over the game. Um, 13 damage to each opponent over the game, and I gained 13 life off of it. Um, again, I feel like it's a very underrated card. Um, Grasp of Fate. Love the, the heart. Ties in great with the theme. Greater Oromancy. Beautiful. Oh, I shall say, for some of these, there is the Eldrain art. Then there's also anime art. And so just as a call out, there's two different ones. Um, this Griffin art is super cool. Um, Karmic Justice. I think this card hadn't been reprinted in a long time. Um, Commander 2015 was the last time. It's not exactly like an expensive card anymore, but I'm excited for it. Um, Knightly Valor, sure. Land Tax is very excited. Love this art of them like rolling it up. Um, I don't have a land tax, um, and I think I might try to go and get one of these. Um, yeah, I like this art the most. I'm not huge, not huge on this one, um, but we'll see what this ends up being. Yeah, Commander Masters was the last reprint, and then it was on the list. Okay. Um, Phyrexian Unlife, cool art. Um, love that they worked in the Phyrexian symbol into this. Um, rest in peace, super cool art, smothering tithe, let's go. I need to get me some smothering tithes. Um, as for told is cool art, compulsion, what is this? Discard a card, draw a card. That's, why does it rummage? That's so weird. And then you can sacrifice this to draw a card. Um, that's very mediocre. Um, love that we're getting copy enchantment back. Um, I used to run, um, this is the first reprint, wow. Um, I used to have an Ojitai commander list that ran copy enchantment because uh, it had like an enchantment sub theme. Curiosity, fantastic card. Um, forced fruition. Uh, when an opponent casts a spell, that player draws seven cards. Um, very cool with things like Neck Usar, things that punish your opponents when they draw. Fry Insanity at the beginning of each in step enchanted player mills x cards where x is the number of cards put in their graveyard from anywhere this turn um that's cool um, i don't think deanna is running this in her curse list with lindy but if she is we might be switching the art because this is super cool hatching plans i've not heard of this one uh this is a battlefield i'll put in the graveyard from the battlefield draw three cards that's a really good with bargain I can see why I have never heard of this. I think this is like a mediocre card. But like in the context of this set, this is an awesome find um, and an awesome addition to, to this like format. Intruder Alarm, I'm sure it's fine. Um, definitely not broken. Um, nothing to see here. Um, Kindred Discovery, A+. Plus. Keep reprinting this card. It's super cool. We had this in Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah. 
Um, two players in my Baldur's Gate pre-release opened this card, um, and they like pack they pack pick one it in both those packs. I was super upset, uh, but very happy that we're seeing this. While the anime art they're calling out as two hundred dollars right now for the foil. Brr. Um, Leylight of Anticipation, cool. Love this Omniscience. Um, Rhystic Study, love it. Everyone needs to learn their lesson about do you pay the one. Uh, Spreading Seas, I played Merfolk, was my first modern list. Um, if I was still like, actively trying to play modern, I'd probably upgrade to this version of Spreading Seas. But um, Bitter Blossom, beautiful. Um, it's going to wreck some people in Limited. Um, Dark Tutelage, cool. Grave Pact, love it. Leyline on the Void, cool. Necropotence, let's go. Um, opposition when an opponent, when a player casts a spell, that player discards a card. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, Oversold Cemetery, I haven't heard of this. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have four or more creature cards in your graveyard, you can return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Womp womp. Um... That's why you haven't heard. I haven't heard of it. It's just to your hand. Uh, if this was to the battlefield, it would be insane. Um, polluted bonds when a land enters the battlefield and opponent's control, that player loses two life and you gain two life. Really good with the new, the bl uh, blue virtue that doubles that trigger. Um, sanguine bond, nice. Um, stab wound, sure. Minus two, minus two, and that um, that player loses two life. Um, this is really good with the enchantment synergies, right? Because, like, you cast this on an opponent's creature, it dies, and then you get your whenever an enchantment is put in the graveyard from the battlefield clause. Um, Vampiric Rites. Love this art. Vampiric Rites is a card that has almost been in so many of my commander decks. Waste not. Cool. Love it. Aggravated Assault. Fantastic art. Blood Moon. Dragon's Mantle, Fiery Emancipation. Um, love this art. Is this supposed to be Torbrand? Yeah. Um, Goblin Bombardment? Yes. A+. Plus. Impact Trimmers. I need to upgrade the one that I have in my deck. Leyline of Lightning. Mana Flare. Um, it just ramps everyone, right? That player. When a player taps at land for mana, that player adds one mana of any type that land produced. Yeah. Um, Rapid Bombardment. Um repercussion uh, shared animosity very excited that that's coming back defense of the heart awesome card uh, let's teach people you have to teach people to play removal and commander with defense of the heart um, you have the goose mother um, Groose uprising I'm going to be getting new art I run this in Hamza um, can't wait to upgrade that ground seal hardened scales also super cool art a new ley line um Parallel Lives, beautiful art. Uh, what's Parallel Lives at? Yeah, $30. Again, $259 for the foil anime art. Uh, Primal Vigor, Prismatic Omen, very cool card. Season of Growth, um, cool, um, fun card. Unnatural Growth, very cool as well. Newtopia Spool. And then here we have our anime art. Um, it's not all of them that have it, this Rhystic Study. Wow. Um, what is this at? $324 for the foil. I love this like sleepy little fairy just hanging out on the flower. Um, love this grave packed art. Uh, I like for Polluted Bonds that it's still Ariette. Uh, it's just her in anime style. Um, I think that's the case for Omniscience as well. Uh, I think this is Tilly Italian. Um, and just like an anime version of them. I uh, love that so much. Uh, I love this sneak attack art. That's super cool. Defense of the heart is beautiful. The gooses. I love that you can see all the golden eggs under there. The parallel lives is beautiful. It looks like we're just like repeating now. Some really cool stuff. Okay, so let's end um, with some chatting about the commander decks. There are four of them. I think, um, oh, what is, what's the, um, Alias V and, um, it's not commander at home. Um, it's the other one. 
Um, oh, what is that YouTube called? They just did a, I haven't finished it yet. Um, they just did a thing for this where it is all of these, uh, all these commanders. One person played the main ones. Elder Dragon hijinks. There we go. Um, where one person played the face commander and one person played the backup commander. Uh, and so there's two versions of the same deck. And it's really cool to, from what I have seen so far, to see both versions of the decks play. Um, so black green, or black blue green. Black blue is fairy based, um, fairy typal deck. Um, it's led by Tegwin, Duke of Splendor. Flying Death Touch, other fairies have plus, plus, plus one. And then when another fairy you control dies, draw a card, and you lose one life. Cool. Um, that's a very good lord style effect. Um, you get a payoff for your creatures dying, stuff like that. Also makes blocks very difficult for your opponent, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and then the white green deck is led by Elevir of the Wild Court. Um, when this um, enters the battlefield or attacks, create a virtuous roll token attached to one target creature you control. So virtuous rolls is not are not in standard. Um, I think this this deck is the only place that you can create them. Um, we don't have tokens. Do we have? If we bounce back here, can we go all the way to the bottom and see the tokens? No. Uh, oh, we did not talk about the jumpstart cards. Um, or not, not jumpstart. I was thinking the other commander cards. Like the set booster cards. Are those not... Are those not on here? Um, no, they might be mixed into this then. Um, so Virtuous Tokens um, is... Enchanted Creature gets plus plus one for each enchantment you control. So it's kind of... Um, all that glitters esque, which is very cool. Then, when an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Yes, I mentioned my my friend at the top of the cast or top of the chat that has a green white enchantment deck um, already, and he got so many cards. Let alone the fact that like there's literally a pre con of new cards for his deck. So, um, the backup commander for blue black is Elena, coming back from the brawl pre cons that they did several years ago. Flying whenever you cast your first spell on each opponent's turn. Create a 1-1 one, one fairy rogue with flying. Then one or more fairies deal combat damage to a player. Go to target creature that player controls. Um, really cool card. If our Kameez list was more about instants, we would consider playing this in that list. Um, just because it gives us a way of getting more tokens, that we, like evasive tokens we can use for that ability. But alas... Um, and then Gilwain, casting director, when it when it or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, um, choose one, either create a roll token, sorcerer token, or monster token attached to it. So I think roll, royal is ward, sorcerer is scry on attack, and then monster gains trample, and they all give plus one, plus one. I think I have those right. Um, really like Elevir. Um, and Gilwain. Um, I think I like the green white commanders more, uh, personally, but I like, I mean, having more fairies is always cool. Having more of this type of, um, uh, typal decks are always nice. Um, okay. New cards. Shout out to Scryfall for just putting all of the new cards in one place. Um, liberated livestock. Um, this art seems really realistic to me in like a weird way. I mean, as, as like this cat is doing whatever this is, when it dies, it is a cat bird ox. Uh, then when it dies, create a cat with a lifelink, a bird with flying and a two, four ox. Each of, for each of those tokens, you can put an aura from your hand or a graveyard attached to it. Like that's super cool. Um, ox drover, um, can't be blocked by oxen. And when it enters the battlefield or attacks, target opponent creates an ox and you draw a card. So you're giving your opponent a two, four, um, but this has vigilance, so they can't like attack you back with it. Um, and you get to draw a card. That's interesting. This doesn't seem on theme for the commanders. Songbird's blessing. Love this again. Awesome fairy tale reference. When enchanted creature attacks, reveal the top card of your library until you reveal an aura card. Put that card on the battlefield. If you don't, put it in your hand. 
Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, this is this is really cool. So like you use this to enchant your creature, then you attack and you get another aura. I like that a lot. Obviously is powerful with like, is it Eldrazi Conscription? Um, that gives your creature, um, I guess no, I say that. It's not because you, oh, you've already attacked, so you don't get the Annihilate trigger. Never mind. Unfinished business. That sword is very strange. Not not a huge fan of it. Um, return target creature card from your graveyard to your battlefield. Yes. Uh, then return up to two target aura or equipment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to it. Super cool. Um, we don't have a, a list for that, but very cool card. Um, Archmage of Echoes. Five mana. Fate Wizard. Flying Ward 2. When you cast a fairy or wizard per spell, copy it. Um... Do we have a lot of, a deck with a lot of wizards? Um, I feel like Varen might have a lot of wizards. Varen themselves are a wizard. Uh, let's put this here. We're going to add a note. Do we have enough wizards? Um, I don't know if we do. Um, we definitely don't have enough wizards in Marchesa. Um, yeah. We might have enough to play that there and just like, I just don't know enough about, um, N Nibon would love that card for Wizard Tribal. Yeah. Um, nope, that's Magda. Um, is it, did I do, did I do a E? There it is. Yeah, I, did, I think I did Nabon. You spelled it. Yeah, I think I typed it wrong. Oh uh, yeah, because you have it spelled the same. Um, yeah, if a wizard entering the battlefield under your control causes a triggered ability of a permanent spell you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. Yeah, like that's super good. So like you have this, this thing is then creating like two copies of it. So you're getting four of the effect. Yeah, A plus. Um, super good card. Um, or in the bond. Um malleable imposter oh sorry i'm gonna say before i keep going these are the type of things i really like that they do um let's copy so yeah exactly nabon yeah four times yeah this is what i like whenever they do a creature type precon is they give you cards that are that trigger off the type but then also trigger off like a very common secondary type for that tribe so like here we have a, a fairy wizard like fairy noble fairy warlock but like there's a lot of fairy wizards, and so um, I think that that's very cool. Um, malleable Imposter, Flying Flash, it enters the battlefield as a copy of target creature opponent's controls, except it's a fairy shapeshifter and has flying. Um, generally speaking, copying your opponent's things is not very powerful, because um, their things are going to synergize with their deck and not with yours. So I'm not huge on this card. Um, obviously there's a chance that like you can just like make a copy of their commander and there's a good chance that might just like work for you. Um, I feel like this is a card I would take out of this list. Um, and I would be excited to play it elsewhere, but I don't know really if I would want to play it here. Um, I could see this. We're going to add this to the commies. Um, again, I don't know. I could see this not being like good enough to actually... Now let's put a question mark. Um, good enough to actually stay there, but I don't know. Making a copy of my opponent's commander and then getting to attack them with it and it's unblockable seems fun. Again, don't know if that's good enough. Um, misleading signpost. Lots of hype around this card. When it enters the battlefield um, during the declare attacker step, you can reselect which player or permanent target attacking creature is attacking and then it's a mana rock. Um, that's cool. Uh, I mean, and generally, you don't want to be holding your mana rocks to be casting during attackers, but, like, it seems fun. Shadow Puppeteers, Flying Ward 2. In his battlefield, create two fairies. Um, whenever a creature you control with flying attacks, um, you may have it become a red dragon with base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, in addition to its other colors and types until end of turn. Sure. I love this art. I love that this, they're using, like, um, shadow puppetry. Like, I mean, it's in the name. But, like, you know, I love that they're making it look like a dragon. If this card wasn't seven mana, we'd consider it for some lists. It's a bit expensive. 
Um, Blight Wing Bandit, Flying Death Touch. Um, when you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top card of that player's library, exile it face down. You can play the card, it remains exiled to mana reserve, mana of any type to cast it. Again, A plus in a Gonti list. Um, fairy Blade Crafter, three mana. When one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, put a plus one counter on it. When it dies, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is its power. Um, cool. Um, would consider this in Marchesa if it triggered off fairies and rogues, or fairies and something else. But the fact that it's only off fairies uh, kind of excludes it from that. Um, Netling Nuisance, that's a name. Um, fun art. It's very like Lost Boys. Um, whenever one or more fairies you control deals combat damage to a player, that player creates a 4-2 red pirate creature token with this creature can't block. The token is goaded for the rest of the game. A+. plus. Like, again, so Peter Pan. Love it. Um, Tegwill's Scouring. You can cast this as though it had flash by tapping three untapped creatures with flying, um, in addition to paying its other cat costs. Destroy all creatures, create three black fairy rogues um i really wish this like saved those three creatures like that would be really cool but the fact that it's like i mean i guess you can like cast this on like your opponent's instep wipe the board but then you only have three fairies left i don't know i don't know um giant inheritance let's get when a chain of creature gets plus five plus five and whenever this creature attacks create a monstrous roll token attached up to one target attacking creature that's cool. So, like, you can attack with this. It becomes a 6-6 six, six with Trample. Uh, or gets plus 6, plus 6, and Trample. When it's put in the graveyard from the battlefield, return it to its owner's hand. Yes. Expensive at 5 mana, but very core, cool, like, rank or style thing. Um, Knick-Knack, Ophi. I love that we're getting more um, oofs. Uh, enters the battlefield with X counters on it. Enters the battlefield, reveal the top X cards over the library. Put any number of aura cards with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Um, then all put all cards revealed this way that weren't on the battlefield on the bottom of your library in a random order. If this had hit enchantments as a whole, we would play this in Hamza. Um, the fact that it's only auras uh, is just kind of like, eh. Um, Lone Crafter Fawn. Cool art. Uh, enters the battlefield. Discard one or more land cards. If you do, return that many target non-land permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Um, Timber Paladin. Cool art. Um as well um temper pound as long as it enchanted by exactly one aura is a base power and toughness is three three if it's enchanted by exactly two orders the base power is five five and gains vigilance and is enchanted by three or more it's a 10 10 with vigilance and trample trample that's a fun card um you could very easily have this be a 10 10 on turn three um if you have three like one mana auras um, that's a kind of magical christmas land but like, because that's three cards are lands. This card's your fourth card. And then you need two, three. Yeah, so you, you're seven of your starting, like starting nine cards have to be one man, this card and one mana enchantments, but, or one mana auras, but that seems pretty cool. Um, Court of Ardenvale. Um, when it enters, you become the monarch. There's like a whole cycle of these. Yeah. So whole cycle of courts. Um, love that we have the courts back. Um, and they all make you the monarch. And then they all have an effect that is better if you're the monarch, except for one, I think. So at the beginning of your upkeep, um, return target permanent card of mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. If you're the monarch, return that card to, remove, return that card to the battlefield instead. Um, Court of Vantress, um, the beginning of your upkeep, choose up to one target enchantment or artifact. If you're the monarch, you may create a token that's a copy of it. If you're not the monarch, you may have this become a copy of it, except it gains this ability. Um, I like this a lot. Um, we're going to put this under Rashmi and Raghavan. Um, with a question mark though. Um, I don't know if we have enough, like, clicking all the wrong things. Um, 
I guess it's yeah, enchantment or artifact. Rashmi has a lot of artifacts, so creating copies of them is very good. Um, also, most mild commander take. Love Monarch. The more things we can do to introduce Monarch to the game, the better. Um, I like that also worst case scenario. Like, I'm assuming you're still the Monarch. Um, this card uh, like makes you another one of your mana rocks or something. Okay, Court of Lock Thrain. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of target opponent's library. You can play that card for long as it remains exile because the mana is um, of any type. Um, of any type can be spent to cast it. Then if you have a monarch, you can cast a spell from among um, the cards without paying their mana cost. Exiled. Um, oh, so you get a card you get a card for free if you're the monarch. So that's I was like, wait, can you not cast it normally? Yeah, so you can always get a card and then you pay for it normally. Or pay for it with mana as those mana of any type. Um, and then if you are monarch, you get that card for free. Um I don't know. Um, let's see. Court of Imbrith. Uh, Imbrith. Uh, this is the one that's different, I think. Um, so you create a 3-1 knight, and then if you're the monarch, it deals X damage, where X is the number of creatures you control. Um, hey, where are we going to put the card that makes tokens and deals damage? Um, we're putting it in Perforos, of course. Uh, I'm just ready to boop some people. Um, I don't know if we would want to... X is the number of creatures you control. I don't know if we would want this in Marchesa. Uh, we're going to put a question mark there. Um, oops, oh, come on. Hit the right buttons, Cameron. There we go. And then... Let's see. I don't know if there's anything else that, like, specifically... Like, I mean... Edgar has a lot of creatures, but I don't think that's where we want to be. I don't think we want this there. Court of Garenbrig. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, put two plus one plus one counters among up to two target creatures. Where do you think we're putting the plus one plus one counter card? Uh, then if you're the Marnock, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. Again, like... Huh, I can't imagine what list we're going to put this in. Oh, is it the one that's all of the plus one, plus one counter cards? Wow. Wow. Um, oh, hello. What are we doing? Hit the wrong button. Castle, uh, Court of Garenbreg. Um, go in there. Going to do a lot of work in Hamza. Um, and then Corvald, Gleeful Glutton. Um, cool that we get in a new Corvald. Um, it's la cost one last attack cast for each type of permanent you can sacrifice to this turn. Um, that's something. Flying, trample, haste, and then when it deals damage, put X plus 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 counters on it and draw X cards or X of them are permanents among cards in your graveyard. Permanent types. So that's pretty cool. So like that's probably generally going to be a like plus three plus three, draw three cards or plus four plus four. Um, uh, like, that seems very good. Um, of course, like, Corvald is made better by things like treasures, because those are free, and they let you activate your other sacrifice effects. But, yeah, not really sure if that's going to be enough. Um, and then Brennard, um, Ginger, Sculptor. Shout out to the gingerbread people um, for Bant, one Bant. Um, each creature you control that's a food or a golem gets plus two, plus two, and trample. Um, then whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you can exile it. If you do create a token, there's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one food, um, in addition to its other types, and has tap, sacrifice, it gain 3 life. Um, really like this card. Uh, it's kind of like a band aristocrats, um, where you're, like, sacrificing your stuff to then get, like, to buy it back. Um, there's a chance that, like, if I open these, this, this might become, like, a backup commander for Chulain. Um, cause two lane can be kind of hard to play, um, like to get to a table unless people are like excited for like a higher level commander deck. Um, I don't necessarily know if, here we go, just could not find the right tab. Um, I don't necessarily know if I would run this in the list itself. Um, I do like it as an alternate commander where you just are like kind of buying back your abilities. 
Um, that seems really fun. And then last one, Throne of Eldraine, uh, encouraging you to play mono color. Um, when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Tap to add four mana of the chosen color. Spend this mana only to cast mono colored spells of that color. And then three, tap, draw two cards, spend only mana of the chosen color to activate this ability. Um, yeah, that's something. Um, I love that Wizards is doing cards like this, like encouraging people to play mono color. I don't necessarily think this is going to get us there, um, especially as they're just printing like some three color legends. Um, I, I would definitely like them to take further steps to reduce the, the fact of like Commander being like this three and like three color soup when it comes to decks. But um, I don't necessarily think this card is going to like encourage anybody to really go and play mono color. But I don't know. Here we are. I uh, think that brings us through all of the new cards uh, coming to Commander from, uh, yeah, then these are the, the reprints. Coming to Commander through, or coming to Magic through the Wilds of Eldraine. Um, we were going to play a little bit of Arena. Um, for the sake of time, we've gone three hours. Um, I think we're going to just go ahead and call the stream there. Um, don't really think, um, or not necessarily feeling up for just doing more. I do need to go get ready for work tomorrow. Um, hopefully this week we'll have some Final Fantasy type stuff. Not exactly sure what'll be going on. Got a handful of other things going on, um, stream wise. And so we'll see if we're able to do something before next Sunday, or if we're going to just kind of do some stuff as part of Labor Day. Um, here in the States. But um, with that, let's go shoot a raid over to Spacehawk um, playing um, the Book of Astra um, there. Um, custom made tabletop RPG. Thank you for everyone who hung out and chatted with us today, especially for some of our new people that came by and said hi. Um, and um, really appreciate you for Coco Fire and AO My Shins. Um, appreciate y'all coming by and saying hi. We'll be back doing some drafts of Wild of, Wilds of a Drain once it drops. Um, we do a variety of stuff here, but if you would like to drop a follow, of course, definitely welcome. Welcome you to do so. And if you are watching over on YouTube, you can like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what cards you are excited for. Um, so with that, have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope your week starts off amazing, and I will catch you later.